What's going on guys? Brian here from Level Down Games coming at you for our PlayStation Experience 2017 live reactions, live commentary, live thoughts. Unfortunately, Frank was unable to join us this evening, but have no fear. He's still there in the corner in his usual spot, looking very dapper, might I add. But obviously it's a picture, so it's just me tonight. That's okay. I'm not exactly sure what to expect from PlayStation Experience tonight. They've already said, Sony of America has went on record, and they've said that tonight's keynote event is going to be dialed back a bit from previous years. What that means, I'm not entirely sure. PlayStation Experience over the past few years has been incredible we've gotten some awesome new game announcements we've gotten a lot of good localization announcements we've seen a lot of you know like from the yakuza studio from sega they've generally always had a presence there geo Corsi comes out you know with the with the vita in hand says you know also coming to playstation vita they, they showed vita a lot of love at playstation experience but they said due to the comments that were made about their e3 2017 press conference which arguably wasn't as strong as some of their previous press conferences at E3, they're dialing back PlayStation experience, making it a smaller, you know, a more low-key event, and they're just going to show off game updates with what, now granted, they did say they had a few Christmas stocking stuffers for us, but I'm not sure exactly what, or how big that stuff's going to be, and what that means, but we should be finding out here shortly. We didn't go live nearly as early as we did last night, just because, you know, I'm by myself, really don't have a whole big pre-show plan for this one, so I'm also trying to keep it low-key, just like Sony is for the PlayStation experience. But one thing that's interesting to me, and one thing I'm not sure, last night at the Game Awards 2017, From Software was there. They did have a very, very, very brief teaser trailer, less than 30 seconds, for their next game. Shadows Die Twice was what showed up on screen. Not sure what that is yet. Is that going to show up tonight? They did make a tweet earlier today that said we would not have to wait 12 months to find out what is coming next from them. Very vague though. That could be tonight. That could be E3. Who knows? We'll have to see what that uh, what that's going to be. I like the New Day reference in the chat. Yes. Don't you dare be sour. I know. I know. I know. Um, so yeah, this is supposed to start right around 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. Sony sometimes does tend to go, you know, they, they, they tend to be a little late, but we'll see. Sometimes they're right on time. I'm praying they're right on time, fingers crossed. But from what I understand, this keynote is going to be about 90 minutes. We'll see. What can we expect? We should get... The release date for God of War. Now, the PlayStation Store did put up a date for God of War this past week, March 22nd, 2018. They may have put that up too early. We'll have to see. But that does sound very plausible as a release date for God of War. We kind of assumed it would be the springtime. March 22nd is springtime. It does make sense. Something else that we could find out a lot more on tonight. We should see more on Ben's next game, Days Gone. Hopefully with the release date, but at least a trailer, I'm assuming. That game, it, it has to be 2018. That game is definitely 2018. And we should see more on it tonight. Like I said, hopefully a release date. There's a chance that is either their summer game or their fall game. One of the two. The other one probably being Detroit Become Human. Now, they did just show a lot on Detroit back at Paris Games Week in October, but there still is a chance we see more on that tonight. Are we going to get a release date for Detroit? Absolutely not. But we might find out a release window. They might say coming summer 2018. They might say coming fall 2018. But we're not going to get a concrete definitive date like we will for God of War and like we could, fingers crossed that we do, for Days Gone. Some other things we could potentially see tonight. They did just do a big, huge, awesome freaking, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. The Death Stranding trailer from the Game Awards last night. Chance we see that again tonight? About 50-50. Will they be there? There's a chance, but who knows? Insomniac bringing Spider-Man. I absolutely think it'll be there. And here we go. We're starting now. I'm going to shut up and we're going to see what's going on. Oh, 
Oh, it's a stage. Okay, it is a stage. I was I wasn't sure if it was going to be a stage. I'm very happy that it is. That actually makes me really happy. That means maybe maybe it won't be as low key as I thought. Or like they said it would be. Their next game takes place in Anaheim, California. No, I'm <laughs> Hello. Ooh. We'll tease a ghost of Tsushima. Tease the Last of Us. Tease a Spider-Man. The Sims. <laughs> Interesting. Block a melee, too. Sean, or someone, if you're in the Twitch chat, let me know how the audio is on the conference. Is it too loud? Is it too low? Am I too loud? Am I too low? Let me know. I didn't run a whole lot of tests before I started. The Sims is a PS4 Pro seller. I know. Okay, it's good. Perfect. I was hoping it was. I kind of left it alone how the settings were last night, so that's kind of what I was banking on. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. It's literally the exact same settings as last night, so... For some out there, it is, yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Layden and Sid Schumann. Okay, more low-key means couches, it means chairs. <laughs> We're going very laid back. It means, you know, pretty cool jackets, jeans, and a shirt that I'm sure he's going to reveal when he zips down his jacket. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us here at PlayStation Experience. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us, Sid. Sean. Is this a furniture convention? <laughs> I think we're going to play a game. We're going to kind of move our way back and forth across the different segments here. Right, and hopefully ending up with those nice postmodern gray uh, <laughs> office chairs. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah. In all seriousness, folks, it is unbelievable to be here again at another PlayStation Experience. So exciting to have all of you here. I really... Give yourselves a round of applause for joining us here in Anaheim. I'm not here in Anaheim, but I'll give myself a round of applause. This is wow. the, uh, I'm joining you live. It's the fourth one. It's the fourth one. And I can't think of a better way to close out this highly memorable year yep. than with my friends. So Correct. thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Really. Yeah, it's incredible. You're very welcome. I'm glad to be here. And Sean, it's been a heck of a year. 
Wow, hasn't it been just? <laughs> uh, it's been a crazy year, 2017. I think we saw a lot of great game releases. Um, uh, any Uncharted fans out there? Absolutely. <laughs> so Lost Legacy was awesome. Uh, sure we're was. certainly proud and pleased with what our, our friends in Amsterdam pulled together with Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn, one of my favorite freaking and games from this year, bar none. The Frozen Wilds out there. Yeah. Because that's what they do. They sneak it out there. I mean, what's great too is the year got off to such an incredible start. Resident Evil 7, one of my absolute favorites this year. Yes. If you haven't played that in PlayStation VR, you haven't played it. I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, Persona 5. Justin Nier has. Automata. Justin's played it in VR. Said it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Incredible year. Incredible games. One of the strongest. Persona years, 5 and New uh, Automata. Game two fantastic games. games. My personal favorite, one of them anyway, is um, Everybody's Golf. <laughs> That's terrific. Everybody's game. Golf was good. I put a lot of hours in Everybody's Golf. Gravity Rush 2. Gravity I mean, Rush 2. Yeah. You yep. could sit here all night, literally okay. listing all the incredible games that came out this year. Right. But we've got a little bit more. We've got other things to do. That's right. Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's it's just it's such a special year. And I mean, there, then we had Paris Games Week. I mean, you know, went really well. We saw the reveal of uh, Sucker Punch's new open. Yeah. Um, Ghost of Ghost Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, yeah, that's going to be great. We saw some of that in the trailer right now, but. Um, there was a lot that happened in 2017, and we can talk about that, and we can we, we can share some 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 of our memories of that with everybody here. Um, but 2018 is going to be another tremendous year for PlayStation, uh, both in PS4 and PSVR. And we're going to talk a little bit about 2018 here tonight. Good. We're also going to bring you closer to some of the world's top developers right here. I think it's something that makes PlayStation experience unique and special, as you folks can be right here with us, all of our friends right here. Thus, all the furniture. That's and all this furniture right here. <laughs> We're going to try to build They're a super throwing a party. Here. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can tell us what you think at the end, but I think if we have a special night here ahead of us. We're going to have some old friends dropping by, Sean. Yeah, we're going to have um, our group chairman, Andy House, is in the house. That's right. And he'll be joining us later with, uh, with our old friend, uh, Mark Cerny. That's right. PS4 system architect, Mark Cerny's dropping by. Right. Do you guys, are you guys fans of God of War? Absolutely. You know, like God of War? 100%. Okay. Okay. Corey Barlog from Santa Monica Studio. He's going to come in and give us a development update here tonight. Right. The, the taxi's outside with the meter running, but Corey's going to run in here, <laughs> deliver a report, and then get right back to the studio and get that, uh, get that work done. But, and we're having Media Molecule. Yeah, Media Molecule. Did yeah. you guys check out the Game Awards last night? You see that new trailer? Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, they're doing great stuff. We're also going to take another look at Concrete Genie here a little Definitely. bit later Ooh, tonight. One we're very all very, cool, very, very excited cool. about. Another one we announced at Paris this year. That's a great looking so game. So we're going to have some updates on 2018 games. We're going to take a peek or two at the PlayStation Experience show floor, which I know a lot of you are going to be excited to check out over the weekend. And there might be a surprise or two in store, Sean. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I think there's more than a surprise or two. All indeed. Right. And That's why I'm here. Shots of that? We're gonna That's go why we're here. Floor? Yeah, we're going to. So we got a big weekend okay. here. And actually, I'm, one of the things I'm personally super excited for are the panels we've yeah. got going on Yeah, tomorrow. it's a great lineup. Really yeah. killer yeah. panel lineup. I think the best we've ever had. I mean, look at this stuff here. We've got Naughty Dog doing not one but two panels. The cast of right. The Last of Us 2 will be right here, right on this stage, actually. You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to see all the Uncharted voice actors for the big 10-year anniversary. Sucker Punch stopping by, Media Molecule stopping by. Super excited that Justin Roiland and William Pugh are going to be stopping by. Oh, I'm cool. a huge Rick and Morty fan. <laughs> I can't wait to see what these guys are up to with the Counting Plus. So it's just a lot of great stuff. Yes. And then can we talk about that show floor? Yes, the Let's show floor, we were taking a look at that earlier today. It's like nothing we've done before. Um, yeah, we have some photos, I think, too, if we could uh, show Oh, can we put those. this up yeah. on the screen? <laughs> Days gone. I mean, that's an experience right that there. That is well, freaking so cool. Yeah, that's the entryway, so you're gonna have to find. Way to get <laughs> that is awesome. To get through that. Uh, it, oh, the ticklish. We'll we, find out. We're tomorrow. gonna find out. Yeah. Another and, one. And one of them is a real human. <laughs> which, which one that is? Another one I'm really excited about. It's incredible. Shadow of the Colossus. Wait, do you see this? Ooh, yes. February 6th, baby. Can't wait. What they get to do, Sean. Can't so wait. What you get to do, this is one of the key colossi uh, from the game. You will be able to climb up the back of it and put that sword right into the center of his head. It's the thing you've wanted to do when playing the game. You'll be able to do it now uh, tomorrow at the show. 
It's incredible. That's pretty I mean, badass. That's just a taste. There's so much more. It's the biggest show we've done yet. So I hope you all check it out tomorrow. Let us know what you think. Got a lot of PlayStation VR here. I know not everyone gets a chance to go on with this. Oh. This is the Inpatient. The Inpatient is here. It's the Inpatient from Supermassive. Oh, that was nice of Oz to sit in the wheelchair like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you will be taken into this experience via wheelchair, and you will have an asylum uh, That's neat, too. Um, That's really like cool. The they wheel you in, totally they close creepy. the curtain, Trust and you me. play the demo. It's incredible. Yeah. So That's really not freaking cool. Not at all. So uh, around 80 playable PlayStation VR experiences right. here over the weekend. And so lots to see and do on the PlayStation VR front. But actually, Sean, speaking of PlayStation VR, right. I believe we do have a new PlayStation VR game to reveal here tonight. Yes, we do. And I think it, it's really important, though, to talk about the VR stuff. Get out there over the next couple of days and experience it. Because you, know, you can read about it on the web. You can hear Sid and I talk about it all, all the time. But until you put the headset on and have a gaming experience like that, you'll never really know what it's like. So please, for the next couple of days, Unfortunately, it made me sick. Because we have a new game we're announcing tonight um, called Firewall. Firewall Zero Hour, I think, is the full, is the full title. Um, let's take a look at that. Oh, we're going to see yeah, it right now. Okay. It's the first gameplay we're seeing of Firewall. Now, this is actually from the folks at First Contact Entertainment. They're serious shooter developers. This is a team-based 4v4, 4v4 tactical first-person shooter. So attack and defense on the two teams. And there's a huge amount of emphasis being placed on sort of the, the tense motions and movements. It's the pacing is very realistic. Peeking around corners here. We're going to see some of that here in the footage. But... Just a very early sneak peek for all of you here. Firewall is coming to PlayStation VR. Uh, you'll be able to use either a DualShock or your PlayStation VR aim controller if you've ever. I'm not. One I'm not sure, man. Like I don't know. So that looks like it would make uh, me sick. Like it's very, very say. shaky. Oh, it's incredible. It's so tense to be in that four, yeah. four on four. Um, you know, trapped in the room. You know, throwing flashbangs and trying to clear rooms out of. This is, enemies. Yeah, this is one we've been wanting to tell folks about for a while, yeah. and I know people who have tried it uh, have, oh, yeah. have really come out yeah. raving. So, and it's on the floor. That's right. It's on the floor here. You'll be able to play it this weekend, four yeah. on four, Firewall. <laughs> and it will be exclusive to PlayStation VR. So uh, excited to see that. So, Sean, uh, what else do we have on the VR front? Anything else? Uh, we have a gift. And um, a year ago, we launched one of my most favorite games, uh, The Last Guardian. Any Last Guardian fans? Oh, they put that in VR. You know, it was such a, a seminal moment for my career because I think I've been working on that game my entire career. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we were able to ship it last year around this time. And in the meantime, uh, Ueda-san and, and the group have come together and they've made a VR experience Ooh. based in the world of uh, Last Guardian. That's pretty You'll cool. You'll be able to go in there and experience that with, with Trico um, calling, calling the beast and, and moving across a, a level. It's probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of gameplay. Uh, but we'll be putting that up on the PlayStation Store December 12th here in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, and, it, and that's our Christmas present to everybody. Right. So please right. go get it. Next Download week that. it's free. Very yeah. cool. That's it is actually cool. a standalone experience. Yes. You don't need to actually own The Last Guardian either. So if you've got right. PlayStation VR, you can get The Last Guardian oh, VR demo. Right now. Here we yeah. go. Seeing a little footage here. Sean, do you think Trico's feathers are more plush and downy in VR? Well, I think you can only rub them one way. <laughs> um, but yes, plush, plush and downy would be one way to call it. Yeah, there he is. There? And you'll be able to call her. It's our fine feathered friend. Yeah. It is. Uh, this was such a magical else, game. Really so please, pay, make some time during the next couple of days and get in and try this. And then yeah. on December 12th, go home, download it, and play it. enjoy for Christmas. Nice stocking stuffer there. So that's the Last Guardian VR demo coming uh, out next week. Right. <laughs> but wait, there's more. There is more. There is more. Um, you know, we like to go back from time to time and um, look at some of our classic catalog games that we have because we believe that, um, you know, a great game is always a great game. And sometimes you have to refresh and bring them back on new platforms because sadly you can't go out and buy a PS1 and... and and play it. Well, so you can. What we have here use eBay. is we've taken a game we delivered um, uh, last year. We brought Wipeout back, and now we're going to bring out Wipeout VR. Yeah, let's check out the trailer. Wipeout VR. Interesting. Another thing I think might make me sick, though. I said just because of the movement. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with me and with motion in VR, but it just it affected me greatly. And this is just such a fast game that I'm, I'm not sure. I'd like to try it, but I don't know. 
fantastic game. I thought it was a great racing game. I own the game. Now, this will be an update that you'll be able to download to your copy of Wipeout, and this will add the uh, VR capabilities uh, to, the, to, to the game. Very uh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So you have to supply your own air sickness bags. We can't give you <laughs> any help with that. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, and the free VR update is coming early 2018, Sean. Okay, free. Yep. Free. Yep. Right. It's on, on schedule. It's on time. Uh, I think it's a strong start so far to 2018, and I got to say, I'm actually really getting fired up about 2018 because, I mean, we've got Far Cry 5 coming yeah. early on in the year. Really excited for that yeah. one. That looks great. Shadow of the Colossus, which... Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't wait. And that's I all going to be playable on the show all floor. All playable on the show floor. And, and Shadow of the Colossus is, is being played on PlayStation 4 Pro. And wait till you see that. Yeah. It is stunning. Amazing. Um, but, I, you know, before we get into all the 2018 stuff, because we got some more to talk about there. We've got I kinda, a lot of chairs here. Got a lot of chairs here. So <laughs> I wanted to revisit what I think is 2017's biggest game. So please welcome Herman Holst from Guerrilla Games. Yeah! Horizon Zero Dawn, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Herman Holst. I'm wearing a tall neck tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, her. Great sit. Wow, we have a lot of family. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Big we do family. family. Yeah, yeah. We love How family. are you guys? <laughs> Herman, you're looking rested. You know, taking my time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here on vacation for 40 hours. <laughs> well, I mean, from my perspective, 2017 has kind of been the year of Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, it's clearly a humongous hit. I mean, people have fallen in love with this. It's a tremendously great looking game on PlayStation 4 Pro or on standard PlayStation 4. Uh, nominations out the wazoo. And you guys just shipped the Frozen Wilds, too. I mean, that's, a, that's one hell of a year. It's been a fantastic year. I mean, we <laughs> no way are they announcing anything else for Horizon. There's years, no way. And, then when it, and it's too early for Horizon Zero Dawn, too. Get, get it has in, to be. In the hands of, actually, of you guys. And we, we hear about it, and we see right. people being has so to be too early. It, it's just heartwarming for us. I yeah, think there's and, a chance Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is a PlayStation 5 game. I mean, that's uh, a whole bunch of new content. I, I, it's, it's unusual to see an expansion, I think, of that size come out the same year as a title as big as Horizon Zero Dawn. And you know what? Ten we hour expansion pack. We working on it the week after we shipped. Oh, yeah? Uh, so it, there was no preparation. There was no time for that at all. <laughs> so it was a, a good chunk of content that we made in, what, eight, nine months. So we, it's been a busy year. Impressive. So, um, you know, given the fact the game is a huge hit, what, what sort of surprised you most uh, in terms of the fan reaction? Well, there, there's been so many surprises on this, on this project. Um, I, I would say the uh, just just the feedback from the audience. I mean, we, we've had such amazing responses. It's great. Uh, we got this. Actually, this is a mail that Sean forwarded on to me from uh, from a president of one of the game studios. He had four daughters, mm -hmm. uh, and he just sent this note that his daughters, uh, young girls, they rearranged the furniture in their home right. uh, so that they could practice like Aloy, because it was <laughs> a character that for the first time actually looked like them. And it's these kind of responses, or it's the, the cosplayers that so many of them, they, uh, they've come out to the studio, they've kind of become super fans, they invest so much in them. Or the sheer amount of time that people spend in the game. Uh, photo mode, some people have spent weeks and weeks just uh, not taking snaps because it actually borders. There's so the many couches, couches, I know. Incredible. There's like yeah. uh, so 15 it's seats it's up there on stage. The, the, the extent <laughs> of that kind of feedback that's been the most surprising to me. One, it's great to have such a strong female protagonist that has been, you know, loved by the entire PlayStation community. We've just created a whole new, a whole new icon for our for our industry. Beautiful game, one of my absolute favorites this year. Now, okay, from my selfish perspective, one of the reasons I'm so pleased to see Horizon be such a huge hit is because, well, it's a single player game. Yeah, I love single player games. Me too. It's all I really um, play. <laughs> 
Bethesda said it best last night at Game Awards. I mean, Hashtag I save player one. Sort of, it seems like people still want them. What do you think? Ab 100%. Yes. <laughs> I can answer that question. <laughs> I think they're dead, man. They're, they're, <laughs> no, you know, the strange thing is it's by far our best-selling game, and it's the first solely single-player game that we've made in a long time. I don't really get the debate that much. To me, when you're uh, somebody like myself, sometimes you're after this kind of magical, uh, unbroken narrative experience, and there is no other way, really, than having that, that single-player experience. So there, there will always be a, a market for that. It's hugely important. Especially in a world as unique and e exotic and interesting as Horizon Zero mm. Dawn, with a character as interesting and, and unique as Aloy. So you don't want to be interrupted. You want to be in that magic spell yeah. and stay there. And, and that's why sometimes a, a single-player game can be the, the best option. Absolutely. Always the best more. option. Herman, you're going to stay with us here tonight, and we're going to have some other folks dropping in. Thank you so much, Herman. Oh, they're going to... Uh, so everyone Horizon that comes on stage is, is going to stay. It's not the only okay. narrative-based single-player okay. game PlayStation's focused on right now. Detroit Become Human. Anyone interested in a small, handcrafted artisan franchise by the name of God of War? Oh, God of War, too, <laughs> yeah. Detroit's also for a single-player, though. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, in that case, how about we welcome Corey Barlog? He's a creative director at Santa Monica Studio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Corey Barlog. We should get the release date for God of War. We should. Deliver the good news, Corey. Deliver the good news. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing, Sean. They're shuffling oh, down the boy, line. Okay. <laughs> good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to cut to the chase on this one. Can we get a little bit of a status check on God of War? How's that one coming along? <laughs> Jesus, Sid, no kind of run up in No, no, no. No foreplay, just right to it. <laughs> Fantastic. It's going really good. Uh, uh, we are in a, a final phases right now, doing a lot of play testing. He's very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. excited. Uh, but it is, you know, it's a, it's a big game. <laughs> I, I can't hear you louder. <laughs> 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 They're shouting March 22nd. <laughs> Freebird? Is that what? <laughs> Freebird. You feeling confident, Corey? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it, we, I'm feeling very good about things. Uh, I would love to be able to tell people when we're going to release it, but my, my dog ate the release date, so <laughs> I don't have that right now. <laughs> okay. uh, but I can tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, Right now, we are in the playtesting phases. In fact, this week we just finished up a uh, playtest. I'm surprised they're not going to say the date. Over the last after the like, PlayStation Store just said March 22nd, that's really the total weird to me. Gameplay time is somewhere in the arena of 25 to 30. Wow! Hours. Whoa! Wow! That's uh, long for God of War. Wow! Huge that's game. Big. That's 30 big. hours. I mean, that's wow! I gotta, it's not as big as his game. That but guy I'm, was you know, amazed. It's close. Yeah. It's, it's getting there. I mean, I got to say, I was assuming it was in the maybe 10, 15, 20 hours. So. Yeah, that's what I was telling people. Yeah. Uh, and then we sort of accidentally made it a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot bigger. Oops. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's twice as big as we expected. That's funny. Yeah. So That's um, incredible. Sean, you know, I'm so I've excited been, I've been for that. About. Corey obviously has a, a very unique vision here for God of War. Mm -hmm. It is quite a shift from what we've seen from the last uh, six, six games, I think it is, in the series. Right. So what was it about Corey's pitch and his vision? that sold worldwide studios on this new God of War? A bribe. Well, he said he'd ship in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey has so much expertise and knowledge and, and special secret skills, as, as if he might have sat in some library at some university and reading all the forbidden you know, Norse mythology books they have in the back room. Um, this is totally true. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he took me through his vision for the game and really taking it to a new place, not only by you know by the camera angle, but the type of story we're telling, a more a more narrative driven and not not so um, like brawler driven kind of game. I thought this is exactly the place where we need to take something like the God of War franchise. It, I agree. It keeps it true. It's to needed its roots, to keep it, makes it fresh it new all over again for a new audience. And that's what Corey sold me on. It took him about 90 minutes to tell you. I just told you in four minutes, but. Um, <laughs> 
It was exactly what I'm a bit loquacious like that. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy who's already shipped his game, and this is the guy who's in right. crunch. <laughs> <laughs> he is way more relaxed. Compare right? and contrast. <laughs> <laughs> what are you still doing here, man? You gotta know, be, right? what's, what's the buck count? Right. I'm getting texted right now. <laughs> so, so, Corey, the game is at least bigger than I expected, I can say that, based me on what too. you've been telling me. It's large. <laughs> it's large. So, but in a big world like that, how do you sort of keep a narrative focus? Like, how do you stay on track with the player? Oh, very, very, very carefully. Uh, I mean, playtesting, honestly, has really helped us a lot to figure out how we keep the player focused. And one of the original things I was talking to people about was treating the game like a, a tour bus. So that you're in this massive world and we're sort of rewarding the player for being curious. And you can kind of pull the string to get off the tour bus, which the tour bus is the narrative in this story. Uh, and you can kind of go look around, check out the world, but the, the bus is always a few steps away, no matter what you do. So it's kind of a fun exploration in the world. The tour bus. The tour bus. I think right? we use the analogy of, of a theme park just around the corner here, Disneyland, for making a rise at zero dawn. Oh. The or a tour bus. And that really was like a theme park. Too. It's a theme park. It's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, Corey, since we got you here, I wanted to run through the latest gameplay footage, actually, that we saw at Paris uh, from yeah, God of yeah, War. Yeah, yeah. But because we got you here, you can add some context and some information that we maybe didn't have back then. Oh, uh, good. So let's go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and roll that. So go ahead and roll that. I'm going to say something right away. Uh, I was talking about playtesting. We were still building the system for the kids' ability to talk in-game, the banter system, we call it. So Atreus, in the game, wasn't fully talking a lot. So when we made this video, I was dropping the audio in uh, without us having playtested it. So I treat this video a little bit like it was a giant playtest with the world. So we sort of discovered, as we sent it out, in a playtest that was happening almost the same time this was coming out, that we were like, oh, man, he talks too much. We need to, to chill that out a little bit. So it was kind of a fantastic realization. This right here is just was meant to give you a little bit of a glimpse into sort of the moment-to-moment -moment combat. Uh, previous ones, we had focused a little bit on the story and the tone and the world. And this is kind of giving you that sense that we haven't really lost that pick up and play aspect of God of War. Uh, this game looks great. Really going to it really does. I can't wait to play it. Open up and use uh, their own creativity. Obviously, uh, this is the same trailer that we saw at Paris Games Week, but I'm, I'm really excited to play this game. It's uh, very fun. And this is really just a, a, a area you find in the game when you're around exploring. So this is not even oh, that's the, neat. the sort of main critical path. Oh, that's area. interesting. So it's, it's kind of honeycombed with secrets and extra paths. Honeycombed, that's nice. I'm you like that? that? Yeah. It's good. Put that in the marketing book. It is absolutely <laughs> honeycombed. What do you think it is? Now, I, I remember there being something here at the more. end of this. Oh, yeah. Well, because it was Halloween, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> sure. people. Anything you can share about uh, that particular ghoul? Uh, that's the Revenant, okay. uh, one of the characters that the we've introduced Revenant. in the, the, okay. the Lost Pages. And uh, those are characters that are practitioners of Sather magic, and they've been doing it for so long, they've kind of lost their, their, their humanity and their sort of human form, if you will. Possessed right. by the drug of magic. The drug, the drug of, of magic. magic. And it's a honeycomb. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so we have tour buses, we have honeycomb. Right. That's right. Theme park. I'm so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's been uh, six games. This will actually be the seventh game, I believe, in the God of War series. I, I think it's actually, if you can include, include the mobile. I was like wondering eight, if, yeah. Right? So let, Not a woman trail, it. man. It's all about that. That's right. So how do you keep up with fan expectations? I mean, there's a, there's a big history with this title. There really is. Uh, uh, very tirelessly, uh, we are constantly getting feedback from our playtesters, uh, paying attention to what people are seeing when we are showing stuff. Uh, this is a labor of love for everybody at Santa Monica. So a lot of people have worked on this franchise from the beginning. We care a tremendous amount about this game. So we hope that you all do as well. <laughs> I do. I know that much. Herman, I mean... You guys shipped this year. Do you have any advice here? Keep going back to these. I, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm trying to help you. Right. I'm trying to help you. Right, Herman, you guys it. shipped. So you've been where he, he, where Corey is right now. Do you have any words of wisdom? Any advice? Lots of coffee. Right. <laughs> no, so the, the Corey's now in a, in a place where you're 
peak productivity, every hour counts. I really don't know what he's doing here right now. He should be back <laughs> in the studio. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it's also the most interesting phase in the project where everything kind of falls into place. And I know because we're pretty close to uh, Guerrilla Games and, and Santa Monica Studio. We actually visit each other. We do an exchange program. We have a lot of people that have been on site to this team. Uh, That's neat. And I know that these guys are in a situation now where everything is falling into place. So it's going to be magical. I can't wait to visit soon. Yes. I want to visit you guys, too. I never have gotten a chance. Everybody else goes the out there. The is open. Right. You're too All right. busy. Finish the game. Totally going out there. We should crowdfund that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say that Corey needs to go finish I the game? Did we say that? You speak for a lot of people here. I think we say that. Right. We'll just delay the game. I'll go <laughs> Corey, I don't know if you got a chance to check out the God of War booth that's actually being built right this minute here uh, at PlayStation. Academy. I have not seen it live in person. I've seen photos and then okay, heard about it over the phone. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. So you'll be able to, uh, there's a lot of great photo ops. You'll be able to kind of wear the Kratos face paint, be able to don the armor, take photos. But there's a special reward for those who are brave enough to get their head shaven. Yeah. No any, any freaking way. Who's, who's daring enough? Nope. Oh, wow. okay. Never going to shave this off. Uh, okay. Well, okay, we're going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, I love razors. Corey. Thank you so much. Uh, thank we're going to have some other guests dropping by here. On that note, it sounds like some folks here watched the Game Awards last night, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm so disappointed no release date. got an date. awesome new look at Dreams, and I thought it might be fun to learn a little bit more about it. What do you think? Sure. I know Jessica's excited right. for Dreams. Well, uh, please welcome Shabon Reddy from Media Molecule. And after what they showed last night, it, it looks a lot better than what I thought it was going to. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Siobhan Reddy. Time to do the couch shuffle. Hello. Hi. Hi. I didn't realize that I was... Hello. Oh, hugs. Hello. I made you shake your hands. I love the couch Hello. shuffle. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. This is the more relaxing seat. This is so relaxing. It is. It's lovely. It's <laughs> I very feel nice. separate. Well, we could just I go. Feel, <laughs> I feel apart. This is the stress seat. Go ahead. Okay, I'll take it on. <laughs> All right. Siobhan, I got to ask, I mean, what's Media Molecule been up to lately? Well, we have just been so busy. Um, heads down, getting, getting dreams ready for everybody. So we're so excited to be here at PSX and sharing the project. Um, you know, for us, like we're a studio that loves to, you know, bring new experiences and innovative new experiences to everybody, and can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. How would you describe Dreams? I mean, it seems like a game that's kind of hard to describe, if I'm frank. Well, I mean, um, so we did make little big. Frank's comment, over there in the corner. And for us, Dreams is you can follow him at the Frankosaurus. Our next step into the Play Crate Share domain, and. Um, I mean, in the trailer that we released last night, like the, the really important thing about that, that announced our story mode and sort of showed what the, the story is that we're making. Um, but also the really important thing about that is that everything was made in dreams. So, you know, create this time is that you can create absolutely anything. You can create games, you can create mu movies, like all of the characters, the animation, the logic, everything, everything was made in dreams. Um, and so for us, that's what's, you know, what's, what's a really big differentiator. And, um, and then you can share it with the world. So really it is like that next step on with the uh, Play Create Share. Tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing here in the story mode. I mean, I think there were sort of like three different dreams or universes that That's we were right, kind of yeah. looking at. That's right, yeah. That's cool. So here you have a little debug. So basically our story mode is um, three interwoven stories. And uh, it's called Art's Dream. And here you're seeing debug. This is the sort of more sci-fi theme. And we decided that instead of just sort of going with one type of gameplay, one type of look, we would do the three. So this is a sci-fi. Um, and we also have the sort of film noir setting, uh, which is a point and click adventure. And That's there cool. is the childhood fantasy, which is kind of classic MM with a bit of horror stuck in. Yeah, and I think we're um, seeing this uh, oh, yeah, here right here now. Yep. Yeah. Looks lovely. I mean, inter so interesting to me. You could build something like this. I mean, oh, well, they look so different. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just super cool, man. It's super cool that you can actually build all this stuff using the game and play through it. Like, I'm down. Like I said, one of my predictions for PlayStation experience would be that we would see dreams, and it would be drastically different. I'm taking the full point back, Frank. We did see it last night, but we're also seeing it tonight. Here we have a map, and so this is sort of how you the dream is laid out. Um, and so you'll see that like, as you play through it, this is, we're beginning here now into Art's dream. So yeah, Art here is the main character, um, and this is again in the noir setting. Um, but yeah, for us it was the idea of like taking these three different settings and sort of binding them together into an interwoven narrative for people and to experience. And not to belabor the point, but you've made all of this in the Dreams engine. That's right, all of it is running Super real time Super freaking dreams. cool. Right. All made in Dreams, running real time. And the time. tools are there that someone could recreate that that's right, yep, yep. On their own. Yep, they're all there. Wow. I mean, one yep, I mean, that's the exciting thing. Yeah, I've, I've just been, always been wondering with this title. I mean, how far sort of does the rabbit hole go when it comes to genres? I mean, <laughs> I mean, can you make, like, racing Did games? Can yeah. you make RPGs? Yep. Can you make... I mean, and it, I mean, I think what we learned from LVP is give people the tools, and that we have. We, we saw the most extraordinary things, and dreams is just it's so it's just so much deeper than LVP. So I mean, for us, like we, LVP being Little Big Planet, we, you know, we're so excited because there's absolutely the sky is the limit, um, and I think we'll actually start to see almost like a I know, genre I know you are. You know, <laughs> coming together I'm sure you're gonna play this game a lot. Super exciting. It strikes me, Corey. I mean. You know, would there be any benefit to God of War maybe borrowing some of this <laughs> dreams technology? And would that help you get across the finish line a little quicker? Oh, <laughs> I would have had a release date today had I had. <laughs> Speaking of that, actually, Shaban, uh, do we have do we have a target release time here for dreams? So we're releasing 2018. Great. Yeah. So we're we're ready, getting ready. Yep. I would imagine you'd need some kind of beta or something to, to really launch a game like this. That's right, yeah. So we're going to do a beta pre, um, prior to launch, but um, yeah, we're not announcing the exact dates just yet, but yeah, that will definitely happen, and uh, we know that our community are desperate to get... So it's the it same the information they've been saying. Happen. A beta will and come before so the launch. Sister Studios within the world. I know, well, you know, Anxious come on over, come on over. We'll do yeah. I'm, I'm sure you get a copy early, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, we'd love to do the jam. Worldwide Studios jam, like there how cool know. would that be? I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. in. Let's yeah. do it. I mean, we're going to do jamming. it. Like, I just think it would be the best. I'll cover the pizza for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Shabon. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of talking here tonight. I, I kind of feel like playing a game, you know? I mean, what do you guys think? Do you want to play a game? Play something. Play okay. a game with us? What are we okay. playing? Any of you guys have any ideas about a fun game to play with friends? Yahtzee. Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. We're going to just Yahtzee. sit down Yahtzee. and play Yahtzee right here on the stage. <laughs> I've got an idea. And ladders. Yeah. I've got an Shoots idea. Shoots and ladders. That's overcooked. Overcooked is a brilliant game. No, <laughs> we're not going to play Overcooked up here. We're going to play. We've done Until Dawn before in the group setting. Yes. We're going to play Detroit Become Human. Okay. <laughs> Please welcome Guillaume from Quantic Dream. Hey Keith, are you are you streaming too? Are you doing this or no? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Guillaume de Fondemier. Count shuffle. A lot of people. A lot of people here, yeah. This is going to be exciting. Uh, we got the idea from this from the very first PlayStation experience, by the way, where we fired up Until Dawn. Great game. I'm sure you guys are fans Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And had everyone cheer and hoot and holler to decide, uh, to decide what actions we should take. But before we do that, we'll do that in just a minute. Guillaume, I, I wanted to, to ask, okay, what okay. inspired uh, Detroit Become Human? Well, as you know, you know, in, in 2011, we started to work on a tech demo called Kara. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, this Android that is getting <laughs> built. And uh, um, when it released in 2012, we showed it as a prototype. Everyone was I know. Us, you know Sean Layden's getting the Kara shaft. When she goes Official out seat warmer. to the world. <laughs> and uh, so David Cage and the team started to work on, you know, what happens when she comes out. And so we imagined this world in about 20 years, 
um, when uh, <laughs> human-like androids are really commonplace. So they are everywhere. Um, they've taken on actually most jobs of humans. Um, and although they look and speak and behave like human beings, they're only machines. They're really at the service of humans. And so in the game, you're going to play as three of these androids. Uh, Kara, of course, <laughs> uh, Connor, and Marcus. And uh, th they're each very different models. Um, they have uh, their own backstory. They have um, um, their own place in society. And as the player, you will have to make critical decisions that is going to impact their fate. So you're really going to be in control of the story mm. and change the way the story unfolds. I love games like this. I love games like this. And the great news is this is playable here this weekend at PlayStation It's Experience. gotta be coming early 2018. It has to be, but I don't know. But I don't I wanna don't wait. Know. Why wait, right? Could be summer. I, I want it all. I wanna open my presents Could right be now. Summer. So Guillaume, take your position, please. Guillaume will be playing on PS4 Pro. And here's what's gonna happen is all you early bird ticket holders out there, you're gonna help Guillaume make decisions in this game, and you're gonna do that by making noise, right? I want to hear you well, so please. <laughs> I want to make noise. I want to help make decisions. So a little bit of context. We're playing this hostage scene, which is the very first scene in the game. We're playing as Connor. Connor is a prototype. This game uh, looks been built uh, to Detroit Become Human, Quantic Dream's new game. They're the Android, studio that Android made Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, weird. and the feed and is so kind of going, going this crazy for a second scene there. Where the house um, Android um, has taken a little girl hostage. And we're going to try and save the girl. It's like a choose your own adventure type of game almost. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. Uh, yeah. X for Sean, no? <laughs> the one that we were talking about where they showed the dad and the girl at Paris Games Week, that trailer. And then, like, the android had to help the girl escape. Is that the one you're talking about? Because that's, that's this game. That was that trailer they showed two months ago. Go shooter on sight. Okay, now I'm in control of the character. I can really move him around the way I want with the... Uh, yeah. That's the one. Left analog stick. With the right analog stick, I can interact. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's a very narrative-driven game, very choose-your-own-adventure style, where you're making the choices, like how so you Connor want your story to go. very intelligent. <laughs> Should I save the fish or not? Save the fish? Well, I don't know. You got to save the girl. You can't save the fish. You got to save the girl. There's no sound. Uh oh. You, you need to go. You can't okay. do that. You. Why aren't you sending a real person? <laughs> Save the fish. Remember that every action has, has a consequence. <laughs> these are, I freaking love these games. So I will, I will stream the crap out of this R2 game and just do multiple playthroughs over and, and over again. You enter what we call the mind palace of the character, shows you your objectives. I don't give a shit. My men are ready to step in, just give the order. So here, for instance, I can see that I can talk to Captain Allen. Captain Allen, my name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's firing at everything that moves. It already shot down two of my men. The game it definitely deals a lot get, with but on the edge of the racism if it falls. between humans and she androids. Falls. Quick, so I can ask him about the deviant's name, emotional shock. We're running out of time. Has he experienced an emotional shock recently? I haven't got a clue. Does it matter? I need information to determine the best approach. 
I heard behavior first. Oh, they won't deviate. The first thing we tried. Listen, <laughs> saving that kid is all that matters. So either you deal with this fucking android now, or I'll take care of him. Okay. Ooh! Don't know if we said the right thing here, but. Okay. Um, so. Only a 48% success the rate now. I have special abilities. One of his abilities of Connor is that he can analyze uh, evidence. And if you find all the evidence, you can then put them together. And you enter into the reconstruct mode. I can't so freaking can wait to play this game. Reconstruct what has happened in a in a recent past. So here, for instance, you can see that someone has taken this wallet here. So the deviant took the father's son. Gun, not son. Okay. So we have unlocked something here. Apparently, that we may use later in the game. So I'm okay. going to further investigate. The probability this of success has risen to 51%. Which is actually fairly large. So here, I'm sorry. Up. <laughs> Seems like the controls are kind of wonky still right now. So I, I just, I take back what I said. It's not early 2018. <laughs> Child didn't hear gunshots. Okay. Success rate still climbing, baby. Play it. Play it. So there's there's really nothing you have to do. Swipe the, the touchpad. Okay, now we know the deviant's name is Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Maybe something that we can use later on. <laughs> We're up. Good. So at any moment, I can press R2 here and see, you know, those little yellow flags. That's an indication of everything that's interactive in the scene. Wow, that's a lot of so crap. Let's take a look at this person here. Dead. Oh yeah, controls are very hard to deal with right now, you can tell. I have a bad controller that we know now. <laughs> okay, and now I can reconstruct and try to understand what happened with him. He got shot three times. It's really part of the gameplay to also play with the camera. Try to find clues. This, this is kind of creepy, Guillaume. <laughs> okay, we found something. I've unlocked a new evidence that I'll be able to analyze. Lock it. <laughs> oh, he was going to be replaced. Android okay, got pissed. Probably what happened. Deviant was going to be replaced. Didn't like it. Oh, Oops. get down. Right, Shots so fired. That is a soft reminder that time is of the essence. Shots fired. <laughs>
here again, I can reconstruct the events, try to understand what happened. I can turn the camera. So freaking cool, man. I like this. Oh, there's the girl. Weapon located. And now I found a weapon. Take the weapon. Take the weapon. Should I take the weapon? <laughs> take. Gotta have a okay, weapon. Okay, so now I have a 78% probability of success. Try. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, now we need to be quick. Don't come any closer or I'll jump. No, no, please, I'm begging you. Hi, Daniel. Well, my name is Connor. How do you know my name? I know a lot of things about you. I've come to get you out of this. Oh. Oh no, the success rate went down. Ooh, I need to have We're gonna see this child die at PlayStation so, Experience. What do you want? Calm. Gotta stay calm. But you need to trust me. What option did he choose? It didn't show. Nobody can help me. Shall we hop the cup? I would leave the cop. I would have left the cop. He's losing blood. If we don't get him to a hospital, he's going to die. All humans die eventually. What does it matter if this one dies now? It's true. We all I'm die eventually. I'm going to apply a tourniquet. Don't touch him. Touch him and I kill you. What should I do? Obey. Duh. <laughs> Lie! You don't have a gun. You're lying! I know you have a gun. I'm telling you the truth, Daniel. I came here unarmed. Okay, so now we can use what we've unlocked. Emma and you. Quick. Emma and you. Yep. You and Emma were very close. You think she betrayed you, but she's done nothing wrong. She lied to me. That's good. I thought she loved me. Just like all the other humans. Daniel, no. What should I do? Quick. Emotional shock. They were going to replace you, and you became upset. That's what happened, right? I thought I was part of the family. 92%. But I was just their toy. Something you throw away when you're done with. What should I do quick? Sympathetic. Listen, I know how to play these games. <laughs> these emotions you're feeling are just errors in your software. No, it's not my fault. I never wanted this. I love them, you know? But I was nothing to them. Just a slave to be ordered around. He's gonna get shot, right? I can't stand that noise anymore. Tell that helicopter to get out of here. What should I do? Accept. Accept. Ooh, last chance. Yep. Last chance. If you let it slip, they'll kill you. Let the Ooh, it went down. Uh-oh. I want everyone to leave. And I want a car. When I'm outside the city, I'll let her go. 
quick. Should we? Don't use the gun. 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 Oh well. Oh, see, okay, she didn't fall. I thought she would fall over with him if he used the gun. That's what I thought would happen. Oh well, it still worked out. I knew you would say that. I would have went about that a completely different way. Nice job. Nice job. Well done. You guys should be very proud you saved the fish. <laughs> you gotta save that fish. That was incredibly tense. And I'll tell you, I played that two or three different times. I didn't even know you could do that. I, I, I would always talk them out of it, or I mean. I, I, I most likely would have talked them out of it. to solve uh, that situation? There, there, there are many ways, and, but m more than the different endings, and that's true for this scene, but for all the other scenes. Um, everything that you do has a consequence. And so you have to experience it for yourself because watching someone play and playing it yourself is, is really totally different. But uh, we're, we're really trying to give players the possibility to uh, make decisive decisions, decisions that are going to impact each of the character's fate and totally change the story. And, and it's, it's really our most ambitious project um, it's the most branching narrative that we've ever created. Um, and it's also the most um, incredible game that we've created because we are touching about, uh, upon certain themes that are, you know, socially relevant. Um, and we hope, we think that we're going to um, touch players on an emotional level and give them the opportunity to experience something really, really different. Well, you touched me on an emotional level, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> what about you guys <laughs> down there? Touched. Yep, touched. <laughs> wow. Intense. How many pages is the script? I need to know. Um, so David Cage says 2,000. Um, <laughs> I, I counted oh. them, it's slightly more. Yeah, slightly more. There's a lot more, probably. <laughs> well, we, we, we are... Um, <clears throat> at the end of the development, obviously, and um, yeah, we have thousands of story permutations oh. that we're going through. It's uh, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you have been working on this for seven years, and you said you were working on yours for how long were you working on yours? Pretty much, yeah. Seven. seven? I mean, Seriously, I'm five number. years, less than five years. <laughs> Everyone, uh, We'll be I, thinking I about the game. Years, We're yeah. thinking about the game for three years, then we start developing. Oh, uh, there you go. So ten. But it's it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just trying to top me. That's cool. Yeah. Finish the game, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't want to. Finish. Now I want to take an additional two to three years. Do, do I have more time? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> two years is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Great job, everybody. You saved the hostage. That was Detroit and Become Human. Play it this weekend. And you Play saved that. the fish. Get a totally different experience. Who knows? That is coming out next year, right? Next year on PS4? It is coming out next year in spring. Spring! I am that. Okay, spring. Ooh. Oh, oh my. Oh, Guillaume, you just laid it right out there. It's exclusive. Okay. Uh, okay, well, very cool, very cool. Good stuff so far. But I gotta say, it, who wants to see some trailers? You wanna see some Yeah, let's trailers? do it! All right. Or an hour in, it's time for some trailers. Let, let's see some new game trailers. Roll, roll it. So what is this? Like, hole simulator? It's kind of cool. You put trash in the hole and it gets <laughs> bigger. You know what would be cool? If it actually ran at 60 frames per second. Dude, it does. Look at the screen. Does it have a platinum trophy? I don't know. <laughs> I just started. So like, what's the point of the game? There's puzzles. If you collect the kiln, the hole catches on fire. Oh, sick. This game has Updog, right? What's Updog? 
<laughs> What's up, dog? Seriously, what's up, dog? <laughs> this looks interesting. Donut County. 2018. Tron. I love the beat. I love this music. So this is not VR exclusive since it says PlayStation VR mode included. So I kind of want to play this. Whatever it is, this looks cool. And it sounds amazing. Two dolphins embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Meet Jupiter and Mars. What's up, guys? Jupiter and Mars, too. Very cool. Wicked bitch. Arc System Works! Justin, if you're watching, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's uh, the fighting game. Never mind. I got excited for maybe a new JRPG. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Is this Persona 5 fighting? No, it's not. I just saw the big name character from Persona 4. And there's Chie, that you can go. Blood Blue Crash Tag Battle. Woo! Blood Blue. Hang on just a minute. Ruby Rose is on the way. Frank is our resident fighting guy at Level Down Games, but I do enjoy me some anime games, so who knows. Bandai Namco! Perhaps it was fate. Soul Calibur 6. Next time, fight like I'm so it. freaking excited for this I game. I am ready to fight you. This is a fighting game. <laughs> I got excited for a JRPG, I'm sorry. No, I, I am excited for Soul Calibur though. This is a fighting game I'm totally down with. I love the Soul Calibur game. Though. I am so ready for another Soul Calibur game. I can't wait. Monster Hunter World, baby. Anyone that freaked out for that thought it might be Devil May Cry, though. 
lot of people thought that was going to be Devil May Cry 5 for a second. <laughs> I want Monster Hunter World so bad. Sean, I know you do too. Then that means the Elder Crossing is upon us again. Hmm. Quite a sight. Just wait till we're finished. Soon, I hope. Ah, the second fleet always delivers. It's up to you to stop it. This whole operation rides on how well you do that. We can do this. The beta comes out tomorrow on PlayStation 4. It's an open beta for it's Monster Hunter World, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I think it One closes or stops on Tuesday, I have ever seen. if I'm not mistaken. Sometime Tuesday it stops. I'm going to check it out. Hopefully I'll have gameplay up on our YouTube channel. Search level down games if you don't subscribe to us on YouTube. Gorgeous. It looks freaking gorgeous. And it looks like so much fun. Not a single clue to what truth they had up to. Use everything at your disposal. I want eyes everywhere. Fight hard and stay smart. January 26th, baby. Can't wait. Can't wait. Mega Man! Mega Man is in Monster Hunter World. Are you freaking kidding me? Unreal. One of the best video game tunes ever. That's freaking cool. That's freaking cool. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew House and Mark Cerny. What's up, guys? Oh, no more couch shuffle. They get the love seat. Wow, a lot of people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh... Andy, you've been at the heart of PlayStation for over 20 years now, and you've been planning a change for the last few months. Is there? Uh, I wonder if he's also. Yeah, they that? wised up. I, I know. Sure. Um, I wonder you know, if he's essence, working on the architecture uh, for PlayStation. 5. I have uh, been with PlayStation since the start, and I've been through some good times and some not so good times. And I think right now the business is probably in the best shape our platform, our games, uh, than I've ever seen it. And thank you. I hope, I hope you guys agree. <laughs> and with that, and having finally achieved the creation of Sony Interactive Entertainment, bringing all of our uh, company together under one roof, uh, and then on top of that, having you know, been with the same company for 27 years, uh, 14 of those years working in Japan, um, it just felt like the right time uh, to hand uh, a great thing 
to the next generation and for me to just go and find one more adventure. So yeah, the tribute at the Game Awards last night was, uh, was definitely very emotional. Yeah. And um, so tonight we have a special guest who also wants to celebrate your impact on gaming. But uh, before that, let's roll video. Roll the video. Once there was an explosion. There we go. Are they going to show the same trailer from last night? Once there was an explosion, a bang which set a planet. Kojima's there, baby. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. This is legit the same trailer from last night. Maybe we'll figure out what's going on this time, but probably not. Creepy baby man, Norman Reedus. That should be his new name. Trying to look for different things from last night to see if I can find anything else that's different about this trailer. Shit, they're here. That thing is super noisy. Frank was right last night. Like, that is definitely giving away their location. 12 shirt on because I was hopeful that we would get some Final Fantasy 7 remake news today. but as the as the minutes tick on I'm starting to think that we're not gonna see that Do what must be done.
This is where it starts getting weird, and I have no idea, like, it even gets crazier, and I'm still not sure what's going on. So want to know what is going on in this game. It's insane. This trailer is like I said legit insane. Basically, you do, I know. I just, I just, Sean, Justin, Keith, I just tagged all three of you as moderators in, in the Twitch room because you guys are, like, always there, for the most part, so. I, I kept meaning to do it, I just kept forgetting to do it, so. While I was thinking about it, I wanted to do that. Once there was an explosion. A bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. An explosion that will be our last. It's gonna be so good. This game is gonna be so good. I hope. I really, really hope. I don't think it can be bad at this point. I really don't. I think, I think Smo Sony made one of the smartest decisions they've ever done when they gave Hideo Kojima the budget to do this game. One Ladies of the and smartest gentlemen, decisions please they ever welcome made. Hideo Kojima. Legend and a genius, and he's wearing one of those Moisey things on his back. He deserves such a standing ovation. Oh, him and his translator get the comfy chairs. So uh, that trailer is a little strange, but the strangest <laughs> thing is that a little after strange. you've played the game for four or five hours, all of that starts to make sense. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> so, um, Andy, I know you and Kojima-san have uh, a long history together. How did you meet 
uh, we met under the worst of all possible circumstances. Uh, it was E3, I was responsible for running the show, and I was hosting an event, and I got a call on my cell phone saying, uh, Kojima-san's code has just been stolen by a fan from the booth, and you have to go tell him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, went out into the night, we had tracked him down to a restaurant, and uh, we called him outside, and uh, on the sidewalk in LA told him that his precious code had been stolen, and we had no idea where it was. <laughs> uh, and I remember the looks on people's faces as, as uh, some guy was, short guy was bowing deeply uh, <laughs> on the sidewalk in LA to apologize for, for what had just happened. Anyway, the relationship could only go in one direction from there, which is obviously <laughs> up, so I'm pleased to say. Ne? あのテラスみたいなところで食べてて、あまあ平井さんも見ましたけど、アンディさんがなぜかこう近づいてきて、こうご飯を食べてたんですよ。Yeah, we were eating together. その時聞かされて、アンディさんがずっと謝ってたんです。<笑> He just kept talking. We were eating at terrace, and for no reason, for no apparent reason, Andy comes out of nowhere and approaches, and then he tells the news and he starts to apologize deeply. I remember that. And、uh, Kojima-san's face just went white as a sheet. <laughs> I've never felt so bad in my life. あの忘れられないですよね。はい。まさに。あのその前からアンディさんとはあの結構会議とか、えー、あってましたけど、まああの時がまあこうなんていうんですかね、こうすごく近くに感じた時です。そうです。Uh, it's hard to forget that. I mean, before that, I've been with Andy meetings and whatnot, but that was the first time that I really remember, you know, get closing the distance with Andy. So.、Uh, Death Stranding.、Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that came together? Yeah, so you just saw the trailer that is all working in real time in a PlayStation 4 Pro. That's crazy. Like I said, that does not seem like PS4 Pro graphics to me. And also, in the latter half of the trailer, you see Norman in, some, in like water, kind of swimming, going to his own body. That's playable. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. So, how did Death Stranding come together? <laughs> <laughs> We can skip that. So,、um, <laughs> may, maybe the world knows. So, what are your, some of your favorite memories together? If Kojima doesn't want to answer, he's not going to. We often go and grab lunch or dinner together. And we barely ever talk about work. We mainly talk about 70s, 80s TV shows, mainly American or European TV shows. <laughs> okay, so, so Kojima san is being very modest here because he will take on pop culture trivia. In the US and Japan, 70s, 80s, and he will kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's just an encyclopedia.、Uh, I, I would also add that I think the most fun time most recently、uh, was sort of building a different form of relationship、uh, and seeing at first hand the sort of rebirth of Kojima Productions. Uh, and having Sony be part of that has just been just、uh, really, really phenomenal from my point of view. Sony needs to lock him in exclusively. They need to just make sure that his stuff doesn't go elsewhere. They really do. Like I said, they're, they're, like, they're like a great pair,、so、they're a great match. When I became independent, I was fortunate enough to receive offers from, di- from many different people. The- まあ、いろんなところあったんですけども、やっぱり自由にものづくりがしたいので、僕のことを理解してくれているところとやりたいなというのはずっとありました。So I had this many offers, but I wanted to keep my freedom to create exactly what I wanted. So I wanted to work with someone that understood me. 
てアンディさんにお会いしてこんなものを作りたいんだよと。っていう。What kind of target audience I have, that's what would normally happen. Okay. <laughs> so I remember at that point, I just told Andy maybe two, three minutes about what I wanted to do and just told him I didn't have any document, and he just said, Yeah, okay. <laughs> <笑>であの最初の作品なんでやっぱりアンディさんあもうねだいぶ付き合いも長いですし、ねえー、信頼関係もあるのでそれであの今回のデストランディングができたとアンディさんがいなければこれはなかった生まれなかったものですこれもこの赤ちゃんも生まれなかった。It was all because of Andy. Without Andy, none of this would have been possible. None of this, what you saw, would have been created. None of the baby giving the thumbs up would have been possible. <laughs> I think maybe a, a shout out to、uh, Herman and Gorilla Games for、uh, Decima. Yeah. He's in order. Uh, that was really it for questions. Any final <laughs> thoughts? <laughs>、oh, we、run. I know. It's, we need more cards. <laughs> <laughs> I think we throw it to the end. Throw it to the end. Yes, so so. And Andy is going to be able to do it together. Well, in the last year, in the last year, so after、well, going lunch,、uh, lunch with Andy last year, I think it was in January. The idea is. 考えてたんですけどもテクノロジーが全くないのでエンジンもツールもないので、まあ、その時は事務所もなかったです。<笑>で、その時、まあ、友達のマークさんを思い出してマークさんに相談しました。So、also thought of Mark and discuss with Mark. で、マークさんと1月世界中のスタジオを回ってそこでヘルマンさんと出会って。今のデシマエンジンがあると。Well, well, Mark, Herman, well, to これもよくいろんなところで喋ってますけども、いろんなスタジオを回ってプレゼンテーションを受けました。エンジンはこうだよとか、ツールはこうですよとかっていうのを受けました。Uh, this is something I often mention, but in that tour I went through different studios and I I got a presentation of what kind of engine each studio was using, what were the characteristics of each one. I didn't have anything to do with it. I had a lot of people in the office. At that point, I had nothing. I think we, had, we were four people in total at a very small rented, space, rented office space, but everyone was really, really kind with us. The Gerilla の皆さんは、プレゼンテーション終わって、で、帰ろうとした時に、一つの箱をくれたんですね。And well,、uh, Gorilla made their, made their presentation showing us their engine, and when we were about to leave, they just gave us a small wooden box. And well, when we opened the box, there was the whole source code of Gorilla's engine. とにかく小島さんこれ,これ持って帰ってくれと言われてれもうそこでもうは泣きそうになってもうこことしかこことあのゲームを作りたいってその時思いましたマークさんも同席されてたと思いますけどはい。It should be noted that at this point we had no contract, nothing, no, no bounds, and they were just like, Yeah, go ahead, please use our engine. This almost brought me down to tears. And I, at that point, I made a decision, okay, this is the people I want to work with. This is also in part thanks to Mark. あのデス・ストランディングっていうゲームの、まあ、テーマは、まあつながりなんですよね、ストランドというか。The theme of this, the, the, the theme, sorry, the theme of this running is connections. で、strength. 最初にアンディさんとソニーさんとのつながりがあって、マークさんとのつながりがあって、ヘルマンさんのつながりがあって、皆さんとのつながりがあって、今ここにデストランディングが
紹介できるというのは非常に嬉しく思います。あ,のありがとうございます。It started with a connection with me and Andy that led to a connection with Mark and that led to a connection with Herman and Guerrilla Games and that led to a connection with all the people in here and that all, the, all those connections led to the, having this running here today. So I want to thank, thank everyone for this. Very, very humble. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we're passing the 90 minute mark right now. I wonder how much we got left. Fun night, huh? You know? Just get some old friends together. Seems like you know, they're wrapping it up. You know? Getting to be holiday times. I love spending time with friends and family, you know? And, uh, I, I count a lot of you among, among that. I mean, it, it, seriously, it's like, it's like a game development super group is stacked up on here. Just what, one huge name after another. Thank you so much for, for all we of you. We could start a musical act together. This would be wonderful. <laughs> it, it would be incredible. What kind of game would we make if we made a game together? That's what I want to know. We would make Death Stranding in dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and it would ship in 2018. And I still do not understand it. How is it? <laughs> there would be a story. Uh, yes, it indeed. There would be a great story. That you'll understand at the very end. <laughs> it would come in under budget. And, uh, well under budget. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm and sorry. early, like all those things, all yes. the things that happen. That seriously is in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, PlayStation Experience is just such a special time, and we have an incredible weekend lined up for everybody here. We've got all those big panels I was talking about earlier. Naughty Dog's bringing it. Sucker Punch is bringing it. Media Molecule's bringing it. And of course, tons and tons and tons of playable PS4 and PSVR titles. Lots of stuff to play. I mean, Far Cry 5 is at the top of my list. You're going to be able to play Firewall Zero Hour. That's the new PlayStation VR game we announced earlier. Shadow of the Colossus, seriously, it's the third time I've said it, I know. Absolutely gorgeous. It's going to make your eyes pop out of your head. And then don't forget, we've got Capcom Cup on yes, Sunday Capcom as well. Cup. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. That's going to be right here. I truly think it is our biggest PlayStation experience yet, and I hope you all agree when you get out there on the show floor tomorrow. Before we wrap up, though, Sean, there's been something I've been meaning to mention to you. Way down here, all by myself on the Way stage. Way down there. That's He's got, right. there's That's two right. seats left to him. I wonder there, if they're going to do another this, surprise. Uh, this thing with this shirt, you know, I see it kind of peeking out. Oh, yeah, I knew here. they were going to reveal the shirt. What, what's the deal with that? Can we get a look? So, so we kind of, it, it's this kind of tradition sort of happened by accident. <laughs> and that I would wear a shirt on stage at PSX, which would give an indication of, kind of games to come in the future, things I want to see happen. Uh, there was the infamous Crash Bandicoot t-shirt experience, but, but it led our friends and partners at Activision to bring out Crash Bandicoot again, which is one of the biggest, uh, one of our most successful titles uh, this year. Uh, we've done that with Ratchet. Um, we've done that with Wipeout, and now we have Wipeout VR coming. Bib ribbon. Uh, yep. And so this, your shirt. Yep. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't oh, exactly yeah. recognize it. No, 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 no! Medi Sir Daniel! Can you tell us anything? That's medieval! medieval. That's medieval! Tell, what, what, what is that? Anyone it know says, what that is? It says Sir Dan. That's medieval! So, I've been, I've been getting a lot, of, um, a, a lot of feedback about the title Medieval. It's a really important title in my, in my personal journey, in my, in my career. Uh, we worked on that uh, when I moved to London. Um, we would like to bring it back uh, on PlayStation 4. Uh, we think Sir Daniel needs one more resurrection. Oh my God, I'm so today. excited. Uh, Dude, Medieval is one of the freaking best for games. Sending suggestions for oh my God. I'd already had this one baking in the oven. It's one of the and best. Then I saw all the pressure coming in, so I thought Sir Daniel for Test, man. What a great lead it. character. Should we roll the video? There's a video. There's a video. <laughs> Let's do that. I didn't think we were actually getting an announcement. I thought we were just getting a tease. Well, well, well. Here's oh my now. God! Finally, you can prove yourself as warrior. I'm telling Frank because he's a huge fan of this as well. I'm dead. Oh my God! PS4. Oh, it's a rem okay, fully remastered, so it's not a new title. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Okay. I'm there still excited. Go. Medieval's coming to PS4. That's awesome. One more thing. Um, this shirt will also be available in the PS Store uh, for the next two days at PlayStation Experience. And uh, all proceeds from the sale of the Sir Daniel uh, Resurrection shirt will go to Able Gamers. Very cool. So, uh, That's real cool. Please, everybody, grab one of these shirts over the next two days. Fantastic stuff. So, uh, hey, I want to thank all of our panelists. Thanks to all of you. It's been an honor. This is an incredible bunch. You guys have been great. We have an incredible weekend planned for all of you. Coming up next is Greg Miller with Kind of Funny. We're going to take a very short intermission, but we're just getting started, so stay with us. Be sure to stick around. You are a warrior. You trained. Ghost of Tsushima oh, looks amazing. Friend. over yet because they said they were going to show more on Concrete Genie and they didn't show that at all. So I thought that when Greg Miller came out from Kind of Funny they would transition to like a, like a post show, but this has clearly got to be still part of the main presentation. Wait, listen, it was all his idea. He wanted Okay, so we're going a lot longer than 90 minutes. That's alright, we're here for the long haul. Or is that it? I wonder if maybe they're going to show off those games in like a post show. I didn't see Red Dead. I'm not sure. Yeah, they cut the audio. So that's got to be it for the actual presentation. So I guess I'll mute the audio here. Not sure what happened there with con with Concrete Genie. Um, Rated RP. Obviously, that is probably going to be something that they show during this post show here with Greg Miller from Kind of Funny Games. So let's briefly run down the things that they did mention at the PlayStation Experience keynote for 2017. The very first thing that they showed was a new PlayStation VR exclusive title, Firewall Zero Hour. It's a 4v4 first-person shooter, tactical first-person shooter. I'm not sure how I feel on that. Like I said, PlayStation VR made me very ill, which is why we actually ended up having to get rid of our VR unit. So... I, I am intrigued to try it out again in the future. I know I know for sure Jessica wants to get one because of a vacation simulator, which was announced yesterday at the Game Awards. So there's a good chance we'll get one again. In the future, maybe I'll give it another try. But this is something with, with motion sickness in me and VR just really it didn't it didn't resonate with me very well. The second thing we saw was a PlayStation VR experience for The Last Guardian releasing next week, December twelfth, for free as a Christmas gift from Sony. Which is really, really, really cool. I I know, man. I know. I know you. I know you've been doing a lot with um, with Oculus, with the Rift. I tried. I like I said I I gave PlayStation VR a try. There's a chance that maybe with Oculus or maybe even with the with the HTC Vive, since it's a little bit um, stronger technology to my knowledge, maybe it would be easier for me to use. But I still I still would like to do more in VR. There that that's a that's a for sure thing. The third thing that they showed, a VR experience for Wipeout Omega Collection, launching for free sometime in 2018. That's pretty cool. Like I said, another uh, a racing game, a very fast-paced racing game. So that's going to be really interesting in VR. 
The fourth thing that they showed was a new look at God of War, even though it really wasn't a new look. It was the same trailer we saw during Paris Games Week 2017. But Corey Barlog was on stage. He did have a lot to say. And even though the PlayStation Store did list God of War earlier this week for March 22nd, 2018, they did not specifically state a release date. So there is still a chance it is March 22nd. But for now, no release date has been announced. The third, the the next thing we saw, Dreams from Media Molecule. Uh, they did confirm that it is shipping sometime in 2018, but no concrete date. And there will be a beta before launch. Same thing they've been saying for, I feel like, two or three years now. They've been saying there's going to be a beta before launch. Every year they say it's coming that year. But this game has, this was announced at the initial announcement of the PlayStation 4 back in February of 2013. So this game has been in development for a very long time because it was in development before that. So I think they said it's been in development since 2010 when Little Big Planet 2 shipped. So I know Jessica's really excited for this. It's definitely a game we're going to pick up, and it looks like a lot of fun. The next thing was Detroit Become Human playthrough with um, uh, Quantic Dreams. Super interesting to me. I'm very excited to play this game. So we... Like I said, it's it's a game that I want to stream a lot here on twitch.tv slash leveldowngames. I'm hoping I'll be able to. The next thing, we had a, a trailer segment. There was the Donut County announcement coming in 2018. There was a game called Jupiter and Mars, which was about two dolphins. Looks like it had a VR mode attached to it. Um, Blaz Blue Cross Tag Battle coming 2018, an anime fighting game. And Soul Calibur VI, another trailer that was shown uh, last night at the Game Awards, launching 2018. And then a new trailer for Monster Hunter World. After that, Kojima came out, showed off the same trailer they showed last night for Death Stranding, but did mention that the game is very much about connections and strands. And they kind of talked about how Death Stranding came to be. And then the very last thing that they showed at the PlayStation Experience 2017 was a tease for a PlayStation 4 full remaster of the very first medieval title. I, that's the announcement of the show for me. That is so exciting. I'm so freaking excited for that. I cannot wait. Hopefully we see it next year. Let's check out what Greg Miller said. finally right dawned now. on me. I emailed PlayStation. I said, hey, could I get Sean or Shu, sit them down and do an interview with them? I'd love to do that. And I expected them to say no. Instead, they hit me up and said, would you like to do it? both of them on the kickoff night. And I said, okay, sure, that sounds like a great idea. So we have 15 minutes to talk to these gentlemen about their careers, about the stuff we really care about, like where all the games are, and all that other jazz. So are you ready for that? <laughs> PSX, please welcome back to the stage, Sean Layden. Oh no, they totally took away a lot of the couches. Yeah, it's it's three people now. You can't believe you can tell me about the shirt backstage. No. I have to keep something quiet. I guess, but I mean like as soon as this What show... happened to the rest of the IKEA children? <laughs> no, no, no. The couch portion of the programming is over. Oh, is that over? No, we're done with that. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. Um Sean? Greg. It's PSX. It is. You've been on the stage a long time already talking. Great stuff, by the way. Thank really you, good right. content, good reveals. No one's asked you the hard hitting questions. Where's the Vita? <laughs> right. And I, I reckon that's not going to be you either. No, please. <laughs> you, know, you know how I am. You know who I am. Let's start at the top of the list. Okay. Okay, fire away. When will we be able to change our PlayStation <laughs> Network name? The elves back at the North Pole have been working on that for quite some time. I've, I've noticed, yes, yes. Many PSXs I've talked to people, and they're always working on it very hard. Um, it's, we'll uh, give you money. It's a large piece of work. Yeah. And um, it's more complex than I think we... Uh, we hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what, are you a coder? You want to come solve this problem? <laughs> um, let me put it this way. I hope... Go help them out, Keith we'll see events occur that you don't have to ask me that question <laughs> next PSA. Okay. Ooh! Okay. Maybe in the next 12 I months. For that answer. And that's the thing. 2017, a crazy year for games. Oh, gosh, yes. I feel like it's been a crazy year for developers and publishers. Yes. Of finally waking up to the fact that in the YouTube, Twitter, social space world, 
you can just be honest with people. You can have these conversations, right? Where you're uh, saying something is better than saying nothing. You're telling people. Unfortunately, hey, that is the issue. They are trying. using the PlayStation Network, the name that you Correct. chose when I you think, first set up, as the not, primary ID. That's the issue they ran into, and that's why they can't change it. That's the issue that they're trying to work around. An answer, even if that answer is. That's 100 percent what they did. Good answer. So now, everybody knows you. You're in charge. You're the big man on campus. Well, they made me sit at the end of the sofa row. Yeah, that, I know, that was weird, right? right that didn't right? seem very respectful. Hi, Somebody Andy. that in charge. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. You've been in the position now since 2014? Uh, yes. President of the sales and marketing company here since 2014 and chairman of the studio since last year. <laughs> Only getting one paycheck. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Andy's on the way out. We gotta start figuring out who comes up next. But, uh, oh, wow, you went there. Uh, what? Well, it's true. Everyone knows the facts. The, here's my question about yes, that. Yes. Yes. Have you adjusted to the role? Because you are now in a position where you say anything, and it gets picked up as this is Bible truth. The headline says Sony says this. Well, the great thing about being the the, the CEO. I had a feeling it wasn't as difficult as they made the it seem the to be. Is that crazy enough? Uh, the head of marketing and the head of development, they always agree now. <laughs> we don't have any of those, you know, problems. Um, no, it's, it's a privilege, honestly, to be uh, back in uh, Worldwide Studios, where I began my career back in 1996. And, a while ago. Um, it's been a while. Real quick, uh, go crazy if you were born after 1996. <laughs> we are old men. <laughs> yeah. Anyone born in the Eisenhower administration? Okay, my people. All They're right. getting there. They're getting there. <laughs> Is that power, I mean, that position, did it take you a while to wrap your head around, like what that meant? You know, it's, it really is a team effort, right? You know, the days of building a game by, by oneself, unless you're publishing on, let's say, Android or iOS, those days are over. That was a shaky you camera really to pull right teams there. together and get them focused in the right direction. You look at some, some games will have 150 or 200 people on it at peak, and that cannot just be driven by one megalomaniac. <laughs> um, it needs a, a whole team around it. The same goes for sales and marketing and publishing. Uh, I see my role as not necessarily you know, picking the target and leading the charge every time but really to create an environment where people can become successful, where people can get involved with the process. Um, I need, it's, it's like distributed computing, right? I need the brain power of everybody that I work with in order to get the job done. So now I think probably the second big question then for PlayStation at this PSX, are you gonna take any of that computing power mm -hmm. and put it behind giving release dates to the video games? <laughs> Because I'm getting sick of 2018, and we're not even there yet. I think um, <laughs> we talked about The Last Guardian earlier, right? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we can create a rod for our own back if we come out with a date, too, uh, a date that's not secure enough too early. Sure. Because we end up moving dates out, and a lot of times people can understand why that may occur. It's just not a, it's not a great place to be. You get all excited and they tell you, I'm sorry, did I say Christmas was December 25th? It's actually July 9th. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was Christmas. What happened to that? So you can't move those kind of things out. I think we're trying to get in a place where when, as soon as we get a solid feeling, we are going to express that. But would you rather us just not show the game until that moment, or do you still want to see the game earlier? Well, you want to see it, do you want to see it or not, or earlier? See, because I just feel like, the, you know, God of War, I'm sold on. First trailer, done. You know, I didn't yep. need to see more. Yep. Spider-Man, we all know Brian and Insomniac, he is not going to ever put a release date on this. Because he just likes to tease True. you. Yeah, you follow this guy on Twitter, Steam has numbers as well. Every weekend, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to play Spider-Man in my house. I'm like, ooh, I don't like you. <laughs> you you got to put pressure yeah, on some of cut these people out. at some yeah. point. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I know. I know. I, we just hate to, to, to put a date out there and then and then keep changing it or ha having it be a moving, moving target. And, yeah. Or having to come back and say, oh, that wasn't the date and you know, we're going to move it again. I mean, there are other things that impact that as well. If you put something on a pre-sale on the store on a certain date, if you move the date, you have to refund all of those pre-sales because the date has moved out of a certain window. So there's like a lot that. of complexity around that. Yeah. Um, but we're trying to get better at it. I think, I think the games that we've talking about in 2018 will be in 2018. <laughs> uh. You're confident <laughs> enough in that part. You have a strong feeling about that part. Yes, because if it doesn't, then I, I, I go old Negan on my people. Whoa. 
Okay. All right. All right. So, speaking of which, is Quantic Dream in trouble? Because I don't think they were supposed to say spring when they said spring earlier. No, they're fine. Okay, they're fine. Okay, they're fine. <laughs> they have a strong feeling as well. Okay, they're just fine. Sure, they're fine. They're, they're, they're in there for spring. You know, you know when spring is in Australia. <laughs> when is that? <laughs> <laughs> so then, talk to me about this PSX. Your chair seems higher than mine. I, it's on purpose. Talk to me <laughs> about this PSX. These are my chairs. You know, just don't what? think too hard about it. Just okay, sorry. remember there's a thing about authority, and if somebody's, okay. you know, authoritative and he higher, you need to answer the questions honestly and get out there more. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yes, your question. The, the, no, about this PSX, it's a different yeah. PSX. This yes. is a different opening ceremony, right? Yeah. It's yeah. very clearly not a keynote. It's not a press conference. Nobody say that. We're not supposed to say it. Like, was I, li that I like it better this way, actually. Do you guys like this? Yeah. If I'm being 100% honest, one guy's like, no! <laughs> All right, there's a door. <laughs> no, I, you know, we, we, a lot of our, our late year announces and, uh, and, and premieres and, and world exclusives and all that kind of stuff went into Paris Game Week. Um, we had it all timed to get like, like, sure. like Ghost of Tsushima, we brought it out there. Uh, it, was, it was very important for, because you all have PlayStation cousins living in Europe, and they're heavy gamers just like all of you are. And so we want to bring, you know, new stuff, stuff hot baking right out of the oven uh, to them as well. And it just didn't give us a whole lot for this show. So we talked about what should we do here, and we thought maybe, maybe we kind of turn this into more of a, a, a dialogue or, or, or ability to, to, to meet the developers and the studio chiefs behind the games. Yeah. You know, to get Corey to come out here and, and then Herman. I thought that was a, a really good chance for, for you guys to get to know who the people are that are making the games you love. I'm a big fan of that. I make my living on just talking. So yeah, that's <laughs> all great. And a good living it is. Thank you. Uh, Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the changes. I don't know what they're thinking. We'll talk about it later. Um, do you, was that an educated decision moving forward? Because I feel like I love PSX. I've said that, you know, and I'm not Thank just you. saying it. You know what I mean? Like, it's my favorite show because it's, it's a lot like Kind of Funny Live. You look to the left, you look to the right, you can talk to anyone here, and you're all into the same thing. PlayStation. That's why you're here. It's why it's great. Right. A few people like that. Uh, <laughs> do you think that what you're doing here, having this open dialogue, the way you're running PSX, making it more of an experience on the floor, because I walked the show floor with Shuhei earlier today, guys. It's awesome. Yeah. Is that a move to redefine or at least reestablish what you think the identity of PlayStation is? Because I've talked on the shows a lot mm -hmm. in the way that I thought PlayStation 4's launch, which has obviously been such a huge success, was so strong. The February event was so strong because it was you guys coming out and being like, all right, no cell processor, this is the box, it runs awesome games, let's talk about games, 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 games. Yes. And then it was, you know, we rolled into E3 and there was a great video of Adam Boys and Shuhei Yoshida talking about how they share videos. Yes. And it was like, they get it, they're there, this is PlayStation. And then PSX happened yeah. and it was like this yeah. great ball of momentum. And then we saw a shift with E3s recently, where it was, all right, Shoe's not going to come out. You're barely going to come out. It's just going to be trailers, and that's how we're going to run it. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, ooh, are we going back to a PlayStation 3 era, era PlayStation that wants to be more behind the scenes, or? Uh, no. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by behind the scenes, but um, I think we found that we have this great opportunity every year now with PSX mm -hmm. to have this kind of let's get by the fireside up close and personal and let's you know, speak our truths and tell our stories. And I think E3, really, it's a trade show. Yeah. That's what it is, it's a trade show. And we have such great content lined up for that. I really felt, why would I, I don't need to come up and say, on the next scene you're going to see, um, Bob is having a little trouble with his son and he <laughs> wants to go over here and get, get a kill an alligator. You know, you just show you what it is, right? And put it up is on the Is that game in development? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, just having so many problems with my son. It's because of the alley. <laughs> Let's go, boy. Yeah. Um, so, we, are, we, are we shouting out greatest hits? I think they yelled out karaoke. I don't understand. <laughs> they don't, they understand. So I think, I think this is what PlayStation Experience is, is trying to be, is to, is, is to be that real connected, engaged um, a moment. You know, for the next couple of days, not only we go on the floor and you're going to be able to see um, some great game play and, and some, you know, there'll be a lot of demos there as well, but you also, there's some a lot of experiential stuff. I think maybe you're going to go in there and think that, is this a, 
is this a game show or is this a trade, is this a theme park, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we want to get you closer to the visions that the creators have for their games and why they make and why they do what they do. You'll see a lot of the development teams and, and creators, you know, on the floor themselves, you know, enjoying uh, what we're going to do here the next couple of days. And, you know, I hope to meet a lot of you as I'm, as I'm warming the floor as well. This is the kind of show you want to do. E3 is really... It's kind of glitzy, but it's right there. You, 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 you want to you tell I like the story. their you different styles. Nice. Obviously, E3, they're going to keep doing about, it, about, like, about, where it's just trailer, 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 trailer. What trailer, did you trailer. think of E3 being open to consumers this year? I Paris thought, Games Week, guys, they kind of do a mix ESA between the two. consumer tickets for that. And then, obviously, and here, they're really going to do more of a dialogue. I like the different settings they have per, you know, for the conferences and for the different things that we have each year. So, obviously, as we saw, we still got some announcements here at PlayStation Experience. It just wasn't as big as we're used to, but that's okay. That's totally okay, because this was a lot of fun. We have to determine, you know, E3 is, like, in the middle of the highway, is going to get hit by cars on both sides now. So it's got to choose a lane to be in. Yeah, that's not the way to drive. So then, looking at 2018, mm-hmm. What is your vision for PlayStation in 2018? Well, I think we continue along our path, um, putting my Worldwide Studios hat on. Um, I think uh, in Worldwide Studios, we have a lot of energy, a lot of devotion, a lot of love around storytelling, around narrative. You know, some people call that single-player gaming. We do have most of our eggs in that basket, just because that's, that's the thing we do well, I think. You um, do. You in do. In my opinion, I am HO. Um, and I don't want to go to any of those teams and, and tell them, you know, I, I read in a magazine that there's something called Games as a Service. Maybe one of those. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Um, so that's, that's what we do. We do Horizon. We do God of War. We do Detroit. We, Uncharted. The Last of Us. These are the things we're going to continue to do. All fan-freaking-tastic really games. Strong. 100 so percent. Our, our thousand percent. Story, you know, continue to play out that way. As a platform, I think um, we're going to see, um, you know, again, humbly, continued dominance of PlayStation in the game market. Um, I don't think anything's going to change that. The, the, what we call the install base, I mean, the number of people who have your thing. The install base of PSVR growing to a critical mass point, I think we're going to see um, a lot more content developers uh, jumping in there. Of course, Worldwide Studios will be there, and we'll, things like we saw today, Firewall, that's awesome. You guys should really definitely get a chance to play that over the next couple of days. Um, we're going to see some more uh, energy in that respect as well. Did P PlayStation VR ca catch you off guard, how successful it's been? Yeah, well, it caught us really off guard when we, when we launched it a year ago and it ran out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh there's no more. Um, and then so the momentum kind of slowed down because we were still trying to get the hardware to catch up with that. And so we've almost kind of put it into a relaunch mode right now, Yeah, you know, getting it out there. And titles like Skyrim was, was, was super cool. That's also playable at the show. You guys should check that out. Uh, Doom VFR. Yep. What's the F in VFR? <laughs> Nobody knows. Um, yeah. Nobody knows no, what the F, F stands F for. for. Those Doom things. And yeah. Stuff like that. yeah. Fromage. Fromage, oh, exactly. Right. The cheese edition. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it's um, about. And then the other titles you see coming out, this you know, Bravo team is on the floor. Uh, you saw, saw the picture of the, uh, the inpatient. Pretty creepy. So I think we're getting a good breadth of content coming out. And um, uh, it caught us by surprise, but, um, but we're fully committed to the, f to, to the platform, to the format. I have more VR questions, but your time's already up. Okay. Which sucks. There you go. But the next man can answer these questions for me about VR. You can ask him. He's a, he's a fan of VR. Mm -hmm. He plays it. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for Shuhei Yoshida. Thanks, guys. Gotta love Shu, hey. All right, Shu. Take him on. Hey, just for your shoe. Oh, yeah, so it's just the best. It's the best. <laughs> if you ever see Shu, just give him hugs. Give him hugs. Look at all these people just leaving, Shu. Now, again, to clarify mistakes of PSX past, they were saying Shu. They weren't booing you. <laughs> this was a big yeah. moment of contention before. Yeah, I was worried. Yeah. <laughs> this year it's much closer, everybody. You like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does PSX mean to you? Well, I always say PSX is my favorite show of the year. Yeah, this why? Just the thousands of happy people. Everybody smiling, 
all love PlayStation. <laughs> They're paying a lot of money to come. <laughs> <laughs> They love PlayStation. Right? So. Does that blow your mind? I mean, you've been with PlayStation for so long to see the audience actually go somewhere each and every year? Well, we never had, I never had this chance. You know, I've been to E3 and Gamescom and all these events, TGS, but um, I don't think we had this dedicated, like a PlayStation only big consumer yeah. event. And it just gets better and better. That the booth that uh, our teams created this year is amazing. It's They're the really freaking production. cool booths. I wish I was there to and check uh, them out. They a, really are really cool. Walk through all the gaming that uh, day's like, gone. Uh, stages. God of War was uh, some incredible. Some games are not, you know, playable. We are not able to provide so some <laughs> sure. very creative. I am interested. I am. Intrigued um, the other things that we didn't do. see anything on Days Gone so, tonight. That does have me a little course, worried about that game. Sony Worldwide Studios. Yep. Slightly you know, worried. First party things. All this stuff's happening. Mm -hmm. Infamously, Infamously, in 2015, you came on our E3 live show. Yep. And rubbed it in kind of funny's face that you had already played Sucker Punch's game. Well, I said. No, no, you rubbed it in our face. You <laughs> don't. Don't try to walk it back. <laughs> No, I said I played something in Sucker Punch office, and they are making something. Uh huh. Yeah, they exist, right? They yeah, they exist. exist. Yeah, I know. I know. They're famous. Up there in Bellevue, being real quiet for a long, long time. Yeah. What What's great about working with Sucker Punch is they are so focused on getting the game feel right, the mechanic, the feel sure. that when you have the controller, you forget you're holding the controller. You feel like you are. Like uh, really, the character. Yeah. So they spend a long time, you know, at the very, very early stages of the development of the Ghost of Tsushima. You know, they always had this prototype game working. So I got to be. Able Ghost to of Tsushima looks amazing. I can't early. wait to play that. Prototype I really can't wait went, to play you know, it. Many, many iterations, and uh, I think it's going to be incredible. So At least I hope so. Well, maybe it's it's years. definitely a, <laughs> a game that I've been How is it? wanting Tell for a something while. Something it. like that. No, since, the fact that it wasn't opening this since show, since Onimusha I don't know what hasn't been around. Doing, what kind of clown shoe operation this is? What is going on with this game? Tell me about the game. Who is the character? How big is the open world? Yeah, so it's a it's an open world game. It's a it's the largest game that they have. Well, in you know, uh, Sucker Punch has yeah. created much larger than Infamous Second Son. And the, it's beautiful. Like, like the you know, trailer that we showed was all you know, rendered in the game engine. Yeah. And uh, it's always already playable, the sword fighting. And it's, uh, you know, we are not talking about lots of uh, gameplay. Oh, I've noticed. Yet. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, it already feels and plays very well. So okay. it's a large, you know, um, island of Tsushima. So actually, you know, we came so close to get the leak. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Early, early this year or late last year, you know, because Sucker Punch has, uh, guys have been visiting the island of Tsushima many times for doing a research, you know, taking photos, talking to the people there. Sure. Uh, you know, learning about the history and the culture and uh, you know nature there that's, a, that's actually really and interesting that became a story in the local newspaper like a Tsushima <laughs> times or something yeah yeah so it was a small piece but uh, friends of friends of you know our, our development team in japan was let know that oh you know i learned about this you know uh, sucker punch people from uh, Seattle visiting Tsushima to do research for the next game and we are like freaked <laughs> out <laughs> <laughs> And uh, don't talk about it. And uh, luckily, the, the paper, the circulation is only a few thousand. Yeah. And, uh, the None of them were on NeoGAF at the time. <laughs> yeah, it was only available in the island of Tsushima. Oh, wow. So yeah, they so had that story never came outside of that island. So we are like, oh. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they are so excited yeah. that, uh, you know, large company, large production house is building Tsushima and uh, they respect they, 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 they are so excited that the game will be made, you know, based in Tsushima history. Yeah. So, so that paper guy wrote the story. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> he, got, he got the scoop. Where were you, IGN? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, so I, I was afraid that Kotaku Japan or IGN Japan might pick, pick it up. Do you find it disturbing that even in an auditorium this large, you can make out Marty's laugh? <laughs> 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 Anyways. Uh, uh. You, Hi, Marty. <laughs> 
How much Last of Us Part Two have you played? Last of Us Part No, I haven't played any. Okay. Don't lie to me. No. <laughs> no, I have. No, I have not. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't played uh, Death Stranding either. Oh really? Yeah. Why not? You just go down there. You're their boss. You can well, go in and you make well, things happen. I, I can just wait and enjoy. You know. <laughs> Are your hands off? With, your hands off? With the <laughs> yes. Yeah, they don't have to do okay. anything. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me, what, is, it, is, it, is it her mom? Is it, I mean, has that been confirmed? Because that's what it seems like. And then she's pregnant? Is that what the knife's about? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's my question. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. no. no. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was watching, you know, news, you know, video, like, uh, yeah. talking about, you know, trying to figure it out. Do you think Joel is alive, or do you think he's a ghost? Ghost of uh, Tsushima? No, not, no, we're not. <laughs> you don't have to plug the game we just talked about. <laughs> Oh, another great game. I played through the uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake. Okay. That's an amazing game. You know, luckily I've forgotten like a half the Colossi, Colossus. Sure, yeah. How to, you know, it's just beautiful and it plays well. You know, the, you know they sped up the frame rate. You know, it's, uh, I think it's 60 frames on PS4 Pro. Okay. And 30 frames stable on regular PS4. It plays so well. They reconfigure the. I can't wait for that. And, uh, That's going to be so you know, amazing. Trying to keep the uh, um, original intent. Sure. Of the but it should be a struggle. The yeah. yeah. It should make you mad. The camera should wig yeah. out. But, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't stop playing. I, I, you know, I played through the game for over two or three days. But it was amazing experience. How have you? How I, I know it's not a. This we were talking about this backstage. Uh -huh. On Kind of Funny Games Daily, we had a conversation, me and Andrea, about if second party exists and is Insomniac and Spider-Man, that's a second party release. And we went back and forth for a while, and then Insomniac just tweeted at us, and they were just like, no, we're a third party developer. It's a first party game. Mm -hmm. So have you seen that? Have you played that? Do you know about that? Can you ask Brian when it's coming out? <laughs> Actually, I played uh, Spider-Man. Okay, good. Yeah. Tell the me about whole, this. whole sequence of the E3 demo. Yeah. It looked like some uh, like uh, uh, scripted sequence, but actually it's an open world game, another open world game, and uh, actually the every time I played, it played differently. Of course, there are like uh, switches you can trigger some event, but in Spider-Man's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that. And uh, you might have seen Brian, you know, play the different paths and. Uh, in, it feels so great. When's that one coming out? Um, <laughs> I don't know what we are saying. So 2018. Yeah, I know, I know you're saying 2018. 2018. <laughs> I know, yeah, a lot of people yeah. are saying 2018. <laughs> we are not saying like uh, early or you know, spring or, right? You're not, no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, well, so are you? I don't know. No, 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 we are saying early for God of War, spring for Detroit, and uh, February for Shadow of the Shadow Colossus. Colossus. Uh, yeah. So now them. Okay. I guess. More, more, yeah. I guess. more information that isn't <laughs> I guess. real information, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the other game I'm, I'm playing is what? Days Gone. That's another open world horror game. Man, yeah. I wait, want wait, Days wait, Gone. Wait, yeah, okay. What's going on with Days Gone? The, the, Days Gone is uh, it's not playable, unfortunately, here. But uh, That has me worried. Like I said, that, that has me worried that it's not even playable but there. But the game's playable, I think, through. Now I so think it's in the phase of I think know, doing the tweaks. That game might not even be next year, man. Wow. Thing, uh, okay. That game might even be a 2018 it's a game. Big game. Right. That was the thing. When I was talking to Sony Bennett E3 about it, it yeah. still seems like yeah. we haven't seen what the game actually is. Because the game obviously is shooting, it is taking on the, mm. the tweakers, the freakers. Mm. But. Freakers. Freakers. The zombies. You know, and so. No, they're not. Freakers. A freaker. My apologies, everybody. <laughs> Freakers, TM, PlayStation. <laughs> it seems like when we see it, it is, all right, let's fight them. But in reality, when you talk about it, they talk about it being the open world and how your bike's a character and how you have to upgrade it and keep the gas in it and get supplies. It seems like it's not going to be just as action-focused as, you know, demos have led us to believe. There um, yeah, there are lots of uh, stories uh, this time around. Yeah. Well, so some of the trailers are focused on the, you know, struggles of the characters and uh, uh, death or, you know. Uh, but it's pretty much action game. 
Yeah. It's like uh, you know, approach the situation. Each situation you can approach anyway. Well, that was the cool thing about behind closed doors D3, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it was the same demo, but this time it was at night, mm -hmm. and so fewer people. You were using snow. It was being stealthy. You That's were neat. Not being heard as easily. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, time of the day changes, and uh, the the you know the uh, difficulty or the approach you have to take each situation changes. So it's very cool. That actually is very interesting. Talking to me. about that's actually really cool. You overseeing the first party, right? Mm -hmm. What all these guys? Oh, well, I've been playing dreams as well. <laughs> there's there's a dreams booth on the floor. If they want to know about dreams, they'll go there. They'll find out about it. Okay. <laughs> Talking about releases. You're, do you guys? How do you decide who goes and in what order? Because I feel. When, if, when we see Last of Us mm -hmm. at Paris Games Week, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, for sure we're not going to see Days Gone then. Mm -hmm. And then it was that interesting question of, well, would we see anything at PSX that was new? Because mm -hmm. I feel like the games on paper, in mm -hmm. the trailer, mm -hmm. in just a glance, mm -hmm. seem so similar mm -hmm. that you can't have them come out one on top of each other. You need to give them room to breathe both in their marketing beats, I'd assume, right? Well, when the games come out, they're very different. Yeah. But, but I, I you know, understand where you're coming from. And uh, your question is about which game to show in which... How you decide, show. I mean, really, more yeah, than Yeah, so anything. it's pretty much so. Um, we tend to try to do big, like, uh, media showcase twice a year. Mm -hmm. Like uh, E3 and uh, Paris this year, and E3 and PSX last year. And uh, teams have the, you know, development schedules and uh, have milestones and uh, some, you know, optimum time to showcase the you know, review or showcase the you know, gameplay or put demos on the show floor. So the, you know, the calendars of these entire games and the you know, PR production team have a conversation with each studios and try to uh, position. Sure. Yeah, so that, that, that's a long, you know, long process. process. You know, it takes go. probably over six months to produce one show. So, so the, our PR team must have been working on, <laughs> or, or starting yeah. you know, preparation for next year's E3 already. So when I, the way it works, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you guys, uh, the first, uh, you know, Naughty Dog, whoever, a first party, a studio wraps a game, then they start prototyping or deciding what they want to work on next time, and then uh -huh. they come to you and pitch you, right? Mm -hmm. So was there concern about Sony, uh, Ben Studios, getting involved into the? zombie world when you do have The Last of Us, you do have this key franchise? Uh, well, in terms of the particular, because Last of Us, Last of Us already existed, and yeah. this game going came later, uh, there's a you know, conversation a little bit between uh, Ben team and Naughty Dog to make sure that the direction that you know, these teams are going are different enough. Sure. Yeah. And you feel that you've hit it? Yeah. And we'll see both these games when? <laughs> Days Gone 2018. Okay. okay. That's good. Right. I, I have memory. You, <laughs> I have memory. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Great. Okay, great. And I don't remember what we've been saying for last of us. Oh, 2019. Nothing. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100% yeah. 2019. I don't say anything about that. Right. They just put out these trailers. Some people get mad. Well, that that says something. Yeah, yeah. What is your take here on PlayStation VR? Because when PlayStation VR first was getting ready to come out, you were the one walking around, beating the drum, telling me how great it would be. I got it. I agree, it's great. Thank you. How are you, how are you dealing with it right now? The fact that, like we were talking to Sean, you weren't prepped for the success you found. Uh, newest numbers come out, two million units sold, mm -hmm. which is something. I guess, why do you- Two million sold through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fans. Why are you guys finding success with play, PlayStation VR, whereas other VR people seem to be middling more? Um, actually, when you talk about other VR people, like, uh, because VR is such a passion project for all of us, not just our teams who worked on PSVR, but the, the you know, Palma and the, those Oculus guys, you know, who worked on, jumped on that early, and, uh, you know, Valve guys, uh, Preaching it's starting to think we're not going to see that concrete genie thing here the, either. Uh, research is they've been doing. So it's a small community. Yeah. And we respect each other and we discuss. And uh, It's weird that they uh, mentioned so it at the beginning of the show and then didn't you know, show it at all. That is really weird. Very intriguing. We this amazing 
new medium, new technology in the hands of lots of people, uh, in the hands of you know game developers and creators and the media companies, people, creative people to use. So, um, so um, I think success of any of us is a success of, for all of us. Mm. You know, because we are, you have to experience to really understand the potential of this new medium. That's the diff most difficult part all of us are uh, uh, struggling. You have to communicate the game. We, can't, we cannot just show the trailer it's because the experience is so different. So any of us uh, releasing a new title or doing the demos, you know, do doing these kind of uh, event and uh, getting more people to try good VR for the first time yeah. is a win for all of us. We are working on good VR. So when you were coming around before release, yeah. you were talking to me and telling me, you know, this is PlayStation 1 again. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to come out of the gate and be where we're at with PlayStation 4. We see it as a 20-year I'm sticking yeah. around just in case they with do have something, in terms of but I'm like 99.999% convinced how much they want to play we're VR, not getting anything else. But I am sticking around just VR. in case. Are you still, you think, in that mindset that this is this long-term thing? Do you think mm -hmm. you're going in a different direction than where you initially thought it was going to go? Yeah, yeah. So what I was saying, I've been saying is the... Um, things that we are seeing, you know, for the launch of PSVR and those, you know, uh, first consumer VR product, uh, very, s you know, similar feeling that I worked on when original first, you know, PlayStation was the very first consumer-based, you know, gaming system that allowed the game developers to use the real-time 3D, 3G, 3D graphics for the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, lots of new experience uh, and then lots of genre were created and the advancement for the last 20 years, you know, when you look at, you know, game like God of War or, you know, Last of Us, it's amazing and it just keeps going and going. So, you know, I can see, you know, PSVR and the first sets of these consumer-based uh, VR systems is like the first generation. Yeah. And uh, we can see for, you know, long term future that the creative people and tech people, because the VR is not a new concept, you know, it's been around since like uh, 1960s, yeah, so lots of research been already made, you know, we've been waiting for these technologies to advance enough so that we can make it reality, so, you know, there are a lot more for all the things that all different companies want to work on to make it better and more exciting, and the the pace and the amount of money and the amount, you know, number of great companies, smart people working on to try to solve the lots of different issues around, you know, VR is uh, mind-blowing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that makes uh, progress faster for everyone. Yeah, so the, um, what we have, I have seen for the last two or three years is amazing. And we are not, you know, games and is leading because the, you know, VR, good VR requires a um, powerful system like PS4 of or, course. you know, high-end PC. Uh, so the gamers are the first users and the game creators are the first developers to work on. But when you look at, you know, all the things happening, the all different kinds of industries are finding the good use of these new, you know, VR technologies. And the... Uh, so the, um, um, you will uh, see or you know, use VR system in the different part of your life without you realizing it in a pretty soon. So uh, that I, I think I'm going to realize I'm using it. <laughs> I think I'll okay. know when I put it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, so uh, what we are um, talking about in the future, you know, this can happen or that can happen. I, I, I think looking back in the future, uh, that will happen sooner than, you know, um, um, you thought. than we, we are thinking now. Right. So I, I'm so happy with the uh, progress that we are all making. And the new games, like I've been playing the Skyrim VR. It's yeah. amazing yeah. to be immersed in that. And, uh, you know, games like um, uh, Moss. Uh, Moss is awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for Moss. Very pretty. Manifest 99, The Invisible Hour. You know, lots of people are experimenting with different 
use of uh, VR technology. So Manifest 99, that's the one you tweeted out recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the one that doesn't have trophies, right? Right, right, right. Why is that happening in yeah. a video game <laughs> shoot? You are, you are giving professional advice to the developer. I am. Put trophies in your game. Uh, who wants to see a video game? Let's play some video games. Who wants to stop talking? Okay. Yeah? Trevor Starkey does. Um, We're getting shoot. somewhere. What are we doing? We're going to bring out some people to play some games. Are you down for that? Okay. Uh, it's a game called Concrete Genie. Yes. Okay, they are showing Concrete Genie. Okay, I'm, I, like I said, I was excited for this. I wanted to see this. Yep. All right, let's do it. This game looks gorgeous, man. This is one of the standouts from, place, uh, from Paris Games Week. Cal shuffles yes. back, baby. What is Concrete Genie? Uh, so Concrete Genie is a game about a boy called Ash who can bring his paintings to life. Uh, and so all of our unique and uh, special gameplay mechanics are about having fun with paint. And that's why we're here today, actually. We thought after we announced the game in Paris, which we had an amazing response to, we got a lot of questions about how does the painting actually work. And we've known for a long time that the first time we were going to debut the game and show it live, we wanted to be here at PSX with all of you. Um, and so we thought this would be a great opportunity to come and say hello. Well, hello. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys ready to say hello? Yes, 100%. So what are we doing? What are we going to jump into? Um, so Jing, our game designer over there. Hi, Jing. Hi, Jing. Hi. <laughs> She's, are you going to get started on the demo? Um, so one of the uh, most important parts of the game is that we want to make anyone feel like they can be an artist. Sure. Now, this has been something that's been on my mind since Paris. <laughs> You're going to look me in the face and tell me this isn't an infamous tie-in, that this isn't Delson. <laughs> Literally the same red hat. He's got a bag on. He's doing graffiti. <laughs> you just ripped off Sucker Punch, and everybody knows it. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that, Greg. Um, you know what? It's completely coincidental. Um, and when, we, when we, we, we showed the trailer at Paris Games Week, I actually got an email from uh, Nate Fox teasing me about that as well. Yeah. And so I had to assure him that it was completely coincidental as well. I say you lean into it now. It's there, just an infamous prequel. There, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> There's, yeah, right? Yeah, Give up all your <laughs> dreams of the game you're trying to make. <laughs> Shove it into this. You know, anyway. it genuinely was completely coincidental. You, when, you, um, when you're making a game, you go through so many revs and iterations. I'm, this, of this is one of my most anticipated um, games right now. This game looks freaking amazing. I can't wait reasons. for this. He used to have a blue hat, and I think when we changed it to a red hat, it suddenly became. <laughs> That's when it happens. <laughs> evocative of Delson, yeah. All right, so what is happening right now? We're just painting? Yeah, so we use the, um, the motion controls in the DualShock 4 pad, and so you can see Jing motioning there. Um, and you have these selection of brushes that you find as you play through the game. Uh, and we call this living paint. And the goal is to take any of the marks and the gestures that you make in the world and grow them into something beautiful. Um, and a big part of our player fantasy is making sure that anybody who plays the game can feel like an artist. I, I can't draw at all in real life, but in this game, you know, I can pull something together that looks half decent. <laughs> Was that a concern when you got going, right? Like, I, did, what was the original iteration? Mm -hmm. Was it freehand painting? And then you're like, oh, well, what about the no, people? Um, no, yeah, that's a good question. So this is actually the third iteration on the painting mechanics that we've had in the game. Um, and we realized that getting the right balance between um, agency and assistance so that whatever you do, you feel like you made it. But what do we add to that through the technology that we've built to make it something beautiful, but you have to still feel like you did it? Sure. Um, and so this, this is where we've ended up, and we're really happy with how it's turned out. How long have you guys been working on it? Quite some time. Yeah? We, we have been on this now for nearly three years. Um, and so it's a labor of love uh, that, that's kind of been coming together slowly but surely. Um, and, you know, we're a very small team. That's the other thing. And how many people? 
Uh, there's 14 people on the oh, team. Oh, wow, only 14 people. Um, and we have a couple of other contractors and interns, depending on you know what part of the process we're in. Uh, but it's, it's very small, and that's why iteration on a small team is the most important thing. Um, but it's a different type of process. I believe it. So then we're showing the painting right now, mm. but how does this get used? in the gameplay? Is it a puzzle game? Like, how do you describe it? So it's a third-person action adventure, uh, and later on next year, we're going to be showing more of the action elements in the game. Okay. Um, but because this is such a pivotal thing, and you know, one of the most striking things about the game, we wanted to kind of get out there with this first. Uh, and there are puzzle-solving mechanics in there. And in a little bit, Jing is actually going to go around the corner and start painting creatures, which is oh. another really important part of the game. Uh, and the story and the theme of the game is, is about bullying. And one of the reasons that the, these creatures are so important is that they're the friends that Ash wished he had in, in real life. Uh, and they have a really important gameplay function as well. And depending on how you paint the creatures, uh, the colors that you use, they have different abilities. And that's really where the puzzle solving comes in. So if you paint a red creature, for example, it will have fire abilities, and then you can go and solve fire puzzles. Gotcha. If you okay. paint it with yellow, it will have uh, electricity powers and things like that. Is there going to be just a canvas mode, like a relaxed mode to jump in and not worry about the story or not doing that? We are looking at that. Uh, I think that's a, a great thing to have in there um, so that people can just go and completely relax. Sure. Um, because the the bullies actually exist in the world as AI, and they have a, an important part to play in how, you, yeah. how you're able to paint as you go through the world. So and up so on the top there, having some way it says Pond, Storm, Demo, Canyon, and Mushroom. She accidentally went over to one of the other Now, when we're backstage talking, and we saw like stars <laughs> you and blew stuff, my mind. I, like so I, said, I can't wait to see what some of the things you can the create. First party. Right. You're actually working out of the San Mateo office. That's right. Yeah, so in uh, Tucked Away, hidden on the back floor of, of one of the floors in the global headquarters is Pixelopus. And we're the only development that's happening there. So we're kind of flying under the radar, but we get to kind of make our own creative IP, which is quite a unique situation. Shuhei, that means you're their boss. It does. No, Connie Booth is uh, <laughs> their boss. And Scott Rohde is uh, Connie's boss. But we all know Scott Rohde doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? Uh, for <laughs> <laughs> For you, Shu, yeah. why was this a game PlayStation wanted to get behind? Why was this a game you wanted them to make? Oh, yeah, so they, after they finished the Untwine, um, they came up with the wall flow mm. concept, ideas, sketches. And uh, I was let in to see all of the different concepts. This and, looks uh, so this concept amazing. Stood out. Like, this just is and amazing. And I was like, well, you know, I can see, you know, I, I'm. I'll be playing this game. And Dom and the team said, wow, well, everybody picked the same yeah. concept. Right? That was an unusual moment. Like we, one, of our, one of the things that happened when we, we kind of are in our dream phase is we came up with 10 different concepts for a game. And we go through an exercise where we imagine the game playing the story. And we do a little one sheet where we try and picture it as a finished product. Um, and then we do a bunch of supporting artwork and prototypes to, to try and figure that out. And when we came to the idea for this game, which actually came from our VFX artist, Ashwin, um, the boards were like five times longer. There was loads more to talk about. And you could actually imagine it as a gameplay experience, which is obviously the most important thing. So that's something we glossed over in that conversation mm. there. But Entwine mm. was the studio's first game. Yes. At the time, who was making up the staff of the studio? Because you guys have brought in a bunch of students, right? That's, like, that's correct, yeah. So everybody on the team were graduates from different academic gaming programs uh, in the States. We had the original six were from the Carnegie Mellon Entertainment Technology Center. Uh, and then we had another couple of students from the San Jose State's uh, animation and illustration program as well. Uh, and then it was uh, myself and Jeff Sangali, who I think is over there somewhere, art director. Yeah, um, so, so the you know, group of very talented, young, passionate people and uh, two mentors. <laughs> <laughs> the old men, yeah. the two old the people there to make veterans. sure these kids knew what they were doing. Right. And then after we did Entwined, um, we knew that if we were going to carry on making games that were uh, investing in, in, in a message and, and were trying to make an emotional connection, we wanted to do it in a genre and at a scale that was easier to access. Uh, and we all love third-person action adventure games, so we thought this would be a great platform uh, in order to kind of make something that was imaginative and a bit different, but was maybe a bit easier to get into than sure. it was. 
when you start this studio and bring mm -hmm. in all these young folks who are super mm -hmm. ambitious and ready to go, but green as hell, yeah. are you thinking it's going to work? Are you <laughs> panicking that this could easily blow up in your face? Um, in this case, no. The, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, when I was at school, there were no courses that you could do that would teach game development. There just was nothing you could do so academically to get you ready for making games. And so when I started with the light uh, a long, long time ago, uh, everything was learned on the job. Yeah. And uh, what I'm we found sure. when we were going to these different academic programs is that the tools and the kind of the abilities and knowledge that they had just from their studies was, you know, equivalent to what I was getting five years into the job. Wow. So they they were actually teaching us stuff on on how you know the best way to kind of put things together. And we run the team with a completely not, flat hierarchy. So over. it's been a really interesting, lively collaboration at all times, basically. And we've added a few more um, senior people, um, you know, to kind of help increase our capacity and, and ambition and scope as well. Um, but we always maintain that. that, that what kind, kind of creature of, is this? Um, young. I can't wait to see when this comes to life. Just to make sure that. We're, you know, one of the main missions of the group is to make sure that people have an amazing start. That's awesome. The games industry. Uh, and that's so awesome. That's, that's a great mission statement yeah. to have for the group. Mm -hmm. So then, to wrap it up, put a pin in uh, Concrete Genie. We're going to see mm. more of it in 2018, obviously. Yes. See the action adventure side of it. We're going to be out next year. But there is more to it than just... Oh, it comes out next year. Okay. Like, yeah. like, I'm tranquil right now. Yeah. The music is good. The art is beautiful. But like <laughs> there's a game to it there that's actually gonna challenge Absolutely, you. Absolutely, yeah. There is a, an action. Okay, so he did he did come over, okay. The original well. monster came over. Um, and we're just kind of pacing out how we reveal that to everybody over the next few months. Well awesome. Thank you so much for coming by. Did you guys like it? Hundred <laughs> percent. That's concrete genie. Oh right. Oh now you're sure about this, right? I'm pretty sure. He's pretty all right, so here's what we're gonna do. Somebody stop me. We're going to tell, no, there's no one to stop you. That's why the problem is. <laughs> this is a shirt for so Concrete Genie. We got these today. This is our, our first crew shirt. It's the first Concrete Genie shirt. And um, we, we love them. It's designed <laughs> the beer, by our, battered, our crispy fish illustrator, creature, Lansing, indeed. on team. And we thought it would be awesome if we gave one to everybody here tonight. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's <laughs> real cool. <laughs> But again, to be clear, he's saying that, and no one told me to say that. So is it going to happen? I don't know. Don't get mad if you leave and there is no shirt. There's probably a shirt, but who knows? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there is. You're pretty sure there's shirts? <laughs> yeah. All right, then. When you leave. Oh, you got one. You didn't even leave yet. Did you steal that? How did you get it? Ah, <laughs> uh, you went to the bathroom, came back in, they gave it to you. All right, cool. There you go. Proof. Right, they're shirts. They're real Proof. shirts. Out there. <laughs> a good deal for Concrete Genie. Obviously, their first shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Well, where the pride. Thank you for coming out, Dom. Cheers, Greg. Pleasure. Yeah. Shuhei, as always, thank you so much. You're a gem. We love you. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, that's the end of the PSX kickoff. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Play cool Good games. Good stuff. Good stuff. Go see cool panels. Be cool to one another. All right, we're going to mute that. The only two things I wrote down that were of note coming out of Greg Miller's portion of the kickoff show for PlayStation Experience 2017. PlayStation Network name changes supposedly are coming sometime within the next 12 months. Sean Layden did tell Greg that hopefully he wouldn't have to ask the same question, where are PSN name changes at this point next year? I'm going to just go back and put this on again. Um, and then the only other thing we saw, we did finally see, like I said, I thought it was weird that we didn't see Concrete Genie because they did show, or they did announce that they would be showing up during the, the kickoff show. We didn't see it when the first half ended. So I was glad to see it because that was one of the standout titles for me at Paris Games Week 2017 back in October. We found out they're going to show off more information early 20, not early 2018, but sometime in 2018, they're going to show the action portion of the game, like what you're actually doing besides painting, and that the game supposedly is coming out 2018. A lot of 2018s, Concrete Genie, Soul Calibur 6, Detroit Become Human, Dreams, God of War, Spider-Man, lots of 2018 stuff. But... That is going to do it for us here tonight at twitch.tv slash leveldowngames for our coverage of the PlayStation Experience 2017. If you like what you saw, 
make sure you follow us here on Twitch. You know, I am going to be live streaming more here really soon. I'm getting a capture card within the next few weeks. I'll be able to start streaming everything that I do because most of the games that I play are on the PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch. So I, I do play some things on PC, but I'm not when – I, when I tend to get games, I usually get them on the Switch or the PS4. And then because I also – I review games for leveldowngames.com, you know, we, we have – we a lot of publishers and developers send us early copies of their games to do reviews. When I get those, they're usually on a console as well. I don't usually get review codes for, for PC. So I'm going to start streaming more on Twitch. I want to try to do this five to six days a week for anywhere from five to eight hours a day. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm going all in. I'm, I'm turning this into a full time thing for right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get Twitch to take off. So if you're not following us on Twitch, you're watching this now. Make sure you're fault. Make sure you follow us here on Twitch.tv slash Level Down Games. Other places you can find us. We can be found on YouTube. Just search Level Down Games. If you're not subscribed to us there, do it now. And then you can find our main account over on Twitter at Original LDG. I can be found at Brian underscore LDG. I'm also on Instagram at Brian dot LDG. Frank, which you see over there in the corner, again, he was not able to do this with me tonight. He got stuck at work. Uh, some emergency stuff going on because of the, the snow that's pounding the south right now. He actually had to work late. I believe he's working tomorrow. It's kind of putting a wrench into some of our recording for the podcasts, but we're still going to get it done. He can be found on Twitter at the Frankosaurus and on Instagram at the Frankosaurus as well. Following us at all of those places. Actually, again, we're on Facebook, but not too many people follow us on Facebook. But we can also be found on Facebook for general posts and information. Doing all those things will allow you to catch all of our content weekly. We have a we have several podcasts. Max Level, every Monday, it's our video game podcast. Game Oracles, it's our video game trailer show every Tuesday. BG Mania, it's our music podcast. A video game music podcast. It's awesome. Every Wednesday. We do the Gorgeous Lads of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast every Thursday, and a top 10 series every Friday. All of that stuff usually posts in the morning right around 9 a.m. Eastern, but sometimes it's a little later depending on how much stuff we have to put into it. Plus, you'll get to see all of our video reviews that accompany our text reviews, unboxings, let's plays, reaction videos like this one here for the PlayStation Experience kickoff show, and so much more. All this content can also be found at our main home on the internet, and hopefully yours as well, leveldowngames.com. One final thing, if you want to support us here at Level Down Games, we have affiliate links in the description below on YouTube. I still need to put them on Twitch, but I'm going to stick them in the Twitch box, the description of Twitch below. They're also found in all of our description boxes for the podcasts. Using those affiliate links for Amazon or any of the other ones that we have set up while you're out doing things online helps support us. It helps allow us to continue to do what we do to bring content to all of you and to do what we love. Thanks so much for your support. We will see you guys Monday for Max Level. Have a good night.